Welcome back to another episode of Podcast P presented by Prize Picks, a Wave Sports and Entertainment original. And today, again, who we got? Another special guest. We got big money in the house. Big, big money. I mean, and, and, and the craziest, the craziest thing about it is what? he's probably uh, technically the youngest NBA player in the league. Don't say that. And he balling like that. Because he was born on a leap year. So technically he like five, he got three or four six birthdays. years old. Hey, <laughs> shout out another Indiana great, Tyrese Halliburton, y'all. Thanks for coming. Hey, welcome to the welcome show. Welcome to the welcome show, sir. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome to the yes, show. Sir. Hey, tell me about that, man. You you born on a leap year. That that's blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. It I've never met somebody born February 29th. Two birthdays. Yeah, it wasn't planned. My, I was supposed to come in like March, came a little early. Yeah. Uh, that was what mom told me at least. Uh, but growing up, it was kind of trash because it was like, you know, I didn't necessarily have a birthday, so yeah. I had to pick the 28th or the 1st, and like I always wanted it to be February, so I celebrated the 28th. Okay. But nowadays, because we got some more money than I had when I was growing up, we celebrate the 28th and, <laughs> and the 1st. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> that's the uh, addition of rich people shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like as a kid though, like when the flyers say fe fe February 29th, the people was like, oh, he bullshitting. Like, no, yeah, but like actually, they playing around. Ain't no fe February 29th. Nah, but what was funny is I actually had a girl grew up with me my whole life and she was born on the same day. Oh, no so way. So there were two of us. Like, we went to elementary, middle, and high school together. That's so crazy. I was like, yeah, shout out to Isabel. She probably will never watch this. <laughs> shout out to Isabel. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, that was just a, a thing that everybody always messed with me about growing okay. up. Okay. No, nah, that's funny. <laughs> now, nah, while we have you, man, we do want to congratulate you on a big contract. Five-year, 260. It clicked there in Indiana. It's mutual love between you and the Pacers. Shout out to you on that hell of a nod. You know, talk us to that. Like, ha has it hit you yet? Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's crazy. You know what's crazy about it is like I tell people this about All Star, like getting All Star too. Like you, you would think that it's like such this like overwhelming feeling that I don't even know how to act. You know what I mean? Yeah. That I would just like start crying and it. But it, it's crazy, like the perspective I have on it of like it was like it was like written. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I've known this is coming for a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Probably last like six months, I knew that something like this would be happening. Mm -hmm. So like. I was just like, man, can we just like, let's just get it done so we can like get get to hooping, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> but it definitely, it, it hasn't hit me yet. Yeah. My dad, my dad is still texting me at random hours of the day and night like, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> like, this, he's like, he texted me so crazy the other day like, your mom ain't never held a million dollars in her hand. Let, make that happen for her. I said, what? He want me to go to the bank, pull a million dollars, and give it to Everybody my mom. Yeah, ready to open up everything he done had. Yeah, I'm like, what? Hey, I don't uh, blame him, dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is, uh, it's definitely surreal. It, it, it definitely ain't hit me yet. No way. Do you got a, like, what's, like, what, what's the treat yourself gift? You got something lined up, some plan? I don't know, bro. I don't know. I don't necessarily have like a vice or anything yet. Yeah. Not yet. Uh, I'm not into cars or anything like that. I'll probably start getting into like watches and, uh, that's probably gonna be my biggest thing, getting into watches and okay. stuff like that. Yeah, that boy, boy. I got a lot of stuff you can, you can uh, yeah, get into. Watches. Exquisite you know, we taste. talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that money, boy. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, when I signed my deal, and I only signed for 90, my first deal was 90. But to me, boy, that was, whoo. And I was smiling that, for like a that's week a straight, lot of money. Yeah, 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 it's hard not to. Lie. As I tell you, I, I, ain't, I ain't stop partying. They keep me <laughs> pictures coming out of me like people was messing with me because uh, my girl had got the little balloon set up in the backyard with the 260 mil on it. Yeah. And she posted a picture on her story of it. And, people, and somebody screenshot it and put it on Twitter. They're like, man, this dude's celebrating like a, it's a baby shower. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, nah, nah. You know, my girl set it up for me. It's a big ass baby. Yeah. <laughs> lifetime opportunity. She better. She doing yeah, the right yeah. thing. She doing it right. She she doing shout right. out to your girlfriend. Keep celebrating. Yep. Keep celebrating. Keep celebrating. You just keep balling. Yep. <laughs> and what's crazy, you 23, dog. So the 260, that you're going to get another five, and that shit probably going to be like 320, <laughs> yeah, 340. Yeah, the TV deal, like, who knows what it's going to yeah. look like here soon. But that's always the crazy part too is people don't like people like regular like so there'd be some fans that be mad at the amount of money mm -hmm. that you know guys get but mm -hmm. uh compared to the salary cap like i was i was reading something the other day about like when Kobe got like 24 million with the lakers or something like the amount of percentage on he had on the salary cap compared to what we do now mm -hmm. was like way more but it just wasn't as much money because that's not where the cap was at right right you know? right, so, right i know people be getting mad but i mean hey man I, that's how much the money the league makes. So we just, yeah. you know, reaping the benefits. Man, they right. with you Our shooting game in the gym. Yeah, exactly. Don't worry about that. 
Shit. Yeah, they, they, they push that shit to the side. We're going to talk about that later anyway. So yeah. we'll, we'll save that combo. Look, the NBA season is done, but that doesn't mean that prize picks is. Jackie, what's the next sport that's making you some money? What I'm doing? Playing a little baseball? Ah! Okay. Home run baseball, baby. Look, I'm up big thanks to my guys over there at the Dodgers, man. Mookie Betts and Freddie Freeman, who are helping me cash out this season, but... The audience don't know what we're talking about right now. So let them know what Prize Picks is, Dallas. <laughs> Prize Picks is a daily fantasy app. You pick two to six players like the video on your screen. Then you pick if they will have more or less than their Prize Picks projection. You aren't competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Look, I know how much I won, but let the people know how much they can win at Prize Picks. You can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. And on top of that, all first-time users that deposit and use our promo code PODCASTP will receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100. That means if you deposit $20, prize picks will give you $20. If you deposit $100, prize picks will give you $100. And y'all already know we do at this time. What we do, Dallas? cha -ching! So P had a max contract in Indiana, uh, but talk a little bit, and there obviously is a huge difference. I think it's like a $170 million difference, yeah. but talk a little <laughs> bit about, you know, an organization believing in you that much and kind of, you know, since you both got those contracts, talk about how, you know, just that feels. Is there any added pressure or what does it feel like to have an organization believe in you that much? Yeah, I wouldn't say... I wouldn't say pressure. I don't. I don't want to go there. Really, like for me, that's not real. Like pressure. You know what I mean? Like for me to live the way I wanted to growing up, and my mom made sure I had everything I ever had when I was little, and we always played in every AU tournament. My mom always came to the games. Like she was doing things. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like to make make sure that we were able to do that. She wasn't living how she wanted to live necessarily. You know, she was making sure her kids were good. So uh, that's that's real pressure to me, mm -hmm. making sure that mm -hmm. you know your kids and your family good, and everybody doing what they can. You know what they want to do you know the way she raised me so I don't look at it like that it's just basketball at the end of the day mm -hmm. uh I always have fun when I play like it's a child's game bro like mm -hmm. I have so much fun playing basketball so I don't look at it like that now on the sense of like how important is it to me that they you know they believe in me that way like that means the world to me you know uh because it, it wasn't like that was going to be their biggest thing all summer they they had said that you know when we met uh before I signed was like the biggest thing that we could do this summer is get this deal done and mind you we've made some free agency moves and some things that will help us build for the future but that just meant a lot to me to know like they're like this is the most important thing for us to get this set in stone and we can make all the moves you know from there but uh I mean it's, it's hard to put it into words like because you know we are as basketball players and you get older like you're always valued because you're looked at as like you know you're an asset at the end of the day right mm -hmm. so like there are people in your life who look at you as like you know like if they can latch on like they can they can come up with you too you know what I mean and so uh it just means the world that you know they are invested in me like that uh on that note of adding players to that team you, I know you guys got Bruce Brown just traded for Obi. Um, and you're very active on like social media when the trade buzz and shit is going on. Are you just locked in like as much as the fans are? Because it seems like like bro, you be on it. Like yeah, 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 I be on it. You love the the news, everything. So like, come on, you know I got woes. I got yeah. Shams. I got the, my notification. I know everything that's going. I know everything that's coming. I be waiting. I be waiting for every single move. I'm always the first one. As soon as the move come on my phone, I'm calling my homies. Like yo, you see yo, this? Yo, you see that? You see what's going on here? But nah, man, it's exciting. I think both of them are, are going to be really good fits. Uh, I've known Obi since. Man, since college, like we did a finish line commercial together, like before we came to the NBA, and we mm -hmm. have like kind of the same marketing agent, so we've been, you know, with each other for, for I mean, we've been with each other forever. We always uh, kick it when I go to New York. Uh, his mm -hmm. girl and my girl are close, so it's exciting that you know we're going to be together and mm -hmm. playing together that way. Uh, and then Bruce adds something that I think we don't have yet, you know, with the energy he brings, and he's just like you can plug him anywhere, man. He right. can make things happen. He's so a winner. I'm, yeah, I'm really excited about yeah. it. Yeah. That's that's dope. Y'all adding a champion to the to the roster as well with with Bruce going there. Um, I'm looking forward to that. You and Obi together, young guns, young talent. Yeah. Y'all y'all play and complement each other so well. So that's that's a good little pairing right there. Yeah, and you know we play fast. Indy so. up, Indy yeah. going up. <laughs> I see y'all. Big Indy. P. What you know? Let's talk about it, your time when you was up in the Indy though. I enjoyed it. Yeah, you I did? enjoyed my time in Indy. Okay, I want to talk to you about how how hard was it to get. Being in a low market team mm -hmm. at the time, 
how hard was it to get players that was good to come to play for y'all? Like how like like who was it? I think Anthony Davis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was it was the problem was is because it's 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 and I don't want it to sound bad, but it's it's Indiana. Like so when people would go, you know, free agency, they go out west immediately. Right. Phoenix, Lakers, you know, Clippers, you know, everybody's gonna go to the big destinations, right? For us, it was just like, all right, now how do we cycle through whoever else that wasn't picked to go to these bigger markets? You know what I mean? And that was just the challenge we had. And but I think when like guys went there, they was like, oh, the culture they love, the training staff, like you know, Carl and Josh. Yeah. Since I've been in the league, there's one of the best trainers I ever had in my in my career. They keep people healthy, and and like you know, guys will come in and be like, yo. Y'all training staff is is crazy. Like, <laughs> like, bro, this was hurting on me. This, like, that shit gone now. And it didn't at the time. I didn't realize it. Like, cause I was, was Indy was the only team I knew. But at the time, it was like you know, it, it that's that's what the talk was. But then, um, like I think just from our culture standpoint, same thing. When guys came over, it was just different than what they used to, and I loved it. It's probably different now. From from you know the 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 culture that you guys have now the team, but when I was there it was like I wouldn't necessarily necessarily say it was military, but it was damn near close. Like, but like, would you say that's the cult? Like, that's the culture you walked into. That's like, the culture I walked into. Right. So it was like that when like right when you got there. <clears throat> right when I got there, and I loved it because I'm a person that deals that that does well with structure. So I love the culture of yeah. like, I mean I don't know they they still fine for like late on treatment everything, time. I everything, love that. Everything, bro. If I'm, I'd be, I'd be getting so mad at Josh. I'd be like, you know, I'm 30 minutes away from the gym. So sometimes traffic might hit or summer. Right. Or I, I, I stopped and I started talking to, talking to somebody on my way to treatment. But like uh-huh. our treatment times would be knocked down. Like, all right, 8.45, 9 o'clock, 9.15. Yeah. Like I walk in there, if I'm at 8.45 treatment, I walk in there 8.47, he don't say, they just say, what up? Like everything's sweet. Slip. When I get to my locker, I'm like, what is that? <laughs> what is that? So fine, I'm like, oh, no, nah, this is crazy. Well, you yeah. for two minutes. Two man. minutes, bro. You late for two minutes. And, and you could be in the building, but if you ain't in that room or on that table at 8.45. On that table. You're How fine. much is the fine? Do you want to disclose that, or are you? <laughs> like, I mean, like that's crazy. They it's not. A, it's not a couple hundred. Late. It's not a couple hundred for sure. It ain't a couple <laughs> it's hundred. It's not a couple hundred dollars. Wow. But that's like. But that I. I like uh, it wasn't like that in sack for me. Like you know what I mean when I yeah. came there, and yeah. now I'm two minutes late, and y'all finding me. I'm like, there's no way. That's that's why it's different. Like, cause all the guys that came there, like, yo, bro, like they finding me for this, like. I don't know if I could play here. Of course it is. Like, bro, nah, you good. It makes like, y'all it'll, better, it'll, though, right, for helping y'all be on time. For sure. So y'all won't I love late, it. Because I wouldn't want to yeah, be fine. I love it because, like, I've been places and, like, you know, guys are trickling whenever they want to. Like, you know, nah, bro, we we trying to win something. Like, we need you here at this time. Like, with with Indy, like, everybody was in the, in the arena at least an hour before yeah, that, practice. Yeah, like, that, that does so much for a team opposed to like dudes rolling in 20 minutes before, 30 minutes before practice. Like, how are you ready to practice right now? You ain't did <laughs> shit to get your body ready, like. No, and they're militant with the with the the lifting part of it too. Yeah, you gotta like, get with 10 lifts. There, oh my, bro, <laughs> bro. You know, cause during season, like some dudes lift a lot, but like my first two years, I like during season, yeah. I'm touching the weights. Yeah. Like, Ain't no way, you know what I mean? <laughs> so when I got there, I remember I walked in and Sean was like, we're going to lift today. I'm like, all right, whatever. And he's like, he's like, when's the last time you lifted? I was like, yeah, two and a half weeks, yeah. like three weeks. He started laughing. I'm like, what you laughing for? This is serious. I'm for real. He's like, there's no way. And we lift every day. Yeah. Like, even if it's like, even if it's just like maintenance body stuff, he, we lift it every day. every day. Like, so that, that makes guys have to be there early. Like he's talking about, yeah. like, cause when I was in SAC or I know a lot of like some of those organizations where dudes will walk in. 10 minutes before practice. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because they don't have to be on the table. They don't have to be in the weight room. Like, right. you've got to be in the weight room at a certain time. So, mm-hmm. like, they don't They don't make y'all stretch your number before y'all start y'all uh, workout? I mean, it, not, well, y'all if, you're in, if you're in Indy, like, you're, you're going to be ready to practice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Cause they you're you're going to be there early enough y'all. and you're going to be, like, stretched. You're going to have treatment. Like, you're going to have some type of activation before you Crazy. practice. So, like, you're good in Indiana. Other places, like, bro, literally, you'll come in, like, I've seen dudes literally get in, like, 
practice at 10 o'clock. They parked at 9.55. Yep. Like just that's a hurried super up through. They, that's they, crazy, they, Yeah, that's bro. crazy. How many times you ever got fined in Indiana? In Indy? In I, I had a hell of fines, bro. Because they fine you for everything, bro. Fine you for <laughs> treatment. Fine you for appearance. Fine you for, like, everything. <laughs> but I loved play. it. I'm not. A anything. They don't play. I'm not, I'm not saying it from an area of a complaining. I loved it. Like, right, right. regardless if I hated getting fined on, on that day or that moment. It but I, I just love that it was like, like, they treat you like you be a professional. You know? Yeah, that and like y'all talked about this on the pod with DeMar. Like, that just helps kind of set the tone mm -hmm. for like, this is how you're supposed to be. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, right, it's good right. for the young guys because like, if, if depend, it depends on where you are. Because you could be some places where dudes walk in at 9.55 and you think that's regular. Mm -hmm. Like, at first, you're like, that's weird. But then you just get used to it because mm -hmm. it's the NBA and you know, everywhere dudes are doing things that you ain't never seen before. Yeah, no, nah, like, it's, it's wild other places. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm saying. So that's that, that like sets the tone the right yeah. way. So with your contract, and I know we've harped on it a little bit, but even me as a fan, I'm looking at all these numbers and it's crazy how much money is just being torched across the NBA. And it, it, it really is wild for like a normal fan. And I know talking to P about it, it's one thing, you know, P obviously has gotten a big contract before. You mentioned how your your dad is texting you, but what about like friends, um, just random acquaintances or just fans, media? Is it weird that now they're talking about how much money you're making? Like, is there a level of like, like, are you uncomfortable with it at all? Or like, how are you kind of dealing with that? Because it's got to be different. Yeah, I mean... Uh, like it's like of course it's exciting but I think there's like for me the way I look at it like I think Rico Hines instilled this in me when I got to the NBA he's like <coughs> nobody cares about how much money you have like in the NBA that does not matter mm -hmm. you know what I mean like mm -hmm. next year I'll be making from my from my my rookie scale contract I'm making like four million dollars like that does, nobody cares you mm -hmm. know what I mean like because when you get on the court there's going to be somebody out there making two that's coming to kill you you mm -hmm. know what I mean like that just kind of comes with the <laughs> territory that's crazy. so like that's that used to be a thing all the times because there there sometimes there'd be dudes on the court who might like like they might get defensive or something there's like some weird dudes in the league or just weird people in general who are like you know I make more money than you like Nobody cares. That has nothing to do with what's at hand. You know what I mean? So that's why I never looked at it that way. I, I never thought about thought about it like that because it's like at the end of the day, no matter what, when season started in October, like I got to lace up like everybody else. And now, honestly, people are probably going to be coming at my head more for mm -hmm. that fact. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. uh, like you got to be prepared for that. And uh, But I don't really trip off it. I just, I've been trying not to post too many pictures with like the 260 or however much, <laughs> like 200 numbers behind me. Because I'm like, it's not, that it ain't about that. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's just an exciting time in general. Now you Googleable now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Bro, Googleable. yeah. It's annoying. Yeah, that, it's, it has to be. Yeah, like what about like... I mean, talk about, I mean, I'm assuming that you have a close group of friends, but like, I'm just, I'm thinking if I, you know, woke up tomorrow and made $260 million in a contract, like, is it hard to like view your friends the same? Like you have to think a little bit different when you're communicating with people. I've talked to P about it a lot, whether that's family, friends, like it adds like a whole nother like stressful factor that you have to think about. So I know it's fresh, but yeah. I wonder if this was later down the road, if you, you know, not that we would need stories, but just dealing with like you being a person, being a human, you know what I mean? And having to, you know, develop relationships with people moving forward. Yeah, no, for sure. I think that, but that like, I mean, obviously it's going to happen more over time. Like I'm sure you, you've been in league while, like I'm sure you've had people that you've had to get out of your life for certain reasons. Yeah, <laughs> maybe sound old. <laughs> yeah, my, my bad, my bad, my bad. Uh, but I'm sure you had people in your life that you, like they just had to go, you know what I mean? And yep. I, I've only been in the league going in my going in my fourth year. There's been people in my life, they just had to go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you're not here mm -hmm. for the right reasons or you think like, cause my, like our, like you said, they can find our salaries on Google. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, so they know how much, like I can't, some people can lie. Like yeah. I can't lie. Like you can, you can look it up. <laughs> I Got it. Yeah. <laughs> they know you got it, you know? So, like, that'd be the hard thing is you just want to know where people's intentions are. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And that's right. the biggest thing because now where I'm going, like, everybody just wants to, like, everybody, like, brands, all the people, they just want, like, a piece of you because, like, like we talked about earlier, you're an asset at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So you got to go about the right way and see where people's true intentions are to me. Mm -hmm. And, like, I think over time, like, it's just going to keep happening. It's just kind of a part of the cycle of life for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. You got to have the right team with you, boy. Yeah, that's it. And, and and you touched on it. Like you got the right mindset. You you well well beyond your years, bro. Like you got the right mindset. Your circle is going going to change. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And it should. Like you're going to find yourself because 
you know, now you are in a, you're going to be in a different tax bracket. So you're going to find yourself like your interest is going to change. Like your likes of life is going to change. Right. Like just everything. And that's okay. That's a part of like your maturation. Like, so don't, don't fear that. Like, don't be afraid from that. Like, don't be afraid to leave certain people behind. Like that's part of like the journey that you're on right now. For sure. You know what I mean? So like, just dive into that shit right there. Yeah. Facts. Cause he done left me a lot, a lot of time. A lot of time. I had to leave his ass, bro. <laughs> Tag yeah, along. Bro. I don't care. On the way back. <laughs> you not disturb him a couple times. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> oh, P, I just want to hang out in front of the house. Man. In front of the house. <laughs> That's it. So I want to talk about free agency a little bit, and I know you're in tune with it, but for P at least, you know, we got Russell Westbrook back on the Clippers and I know you're a huge fan of Russ. I love him. I'm so happy he's back as well. Someone tweeted or something like it might have been one of the biggest pay cuts in NBA history to stay with the Clippers. But talk about how much that means to you uh, with Russ staying with the Clippers. Yeah. I mean, shit. Shout out Russ, dog. Like, <laughs> shout out Russ. We Like, that's a steal, right? Like, you get Russ at the minimum, that is a steal. P, 7.8. I know. Eight. I know. I know. But <laughs> you know eight. what? The thing is, though, like, like Russ on. is Russ is doing so well off the court that like that he's not moved by money. Like, and I talked to him before, and it's funny because I was like, as I'm talking to him, and I know like what we can offer him, and it's like it's an awkward moment. Like, yeah. should I recruit him? Like. Back, yeah, you don't want to be like. This, I don't want to like, be that guy yeah, that yeah, like, yeah. bro, lowball you like. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> like, hey, what do you so, got for me? Well, yeah. uh, Now that we're talking about. So it. when I was, I'm texting him. I'm talking to him, and I'm just like, basically, like, you know, <laughs> just keep us as an option. Like, you know, like we would love to have you back. Basically, like I'm thinking, like, ah, he no way he coming back. And he like, you know, like, I'm I'm trying to come back, bro. Like, like, what we doing? So I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, what? But uh, nah, it's it's uh, it's dope, man. I'm happy to have Russ back. He means so much to the team. Just that small stint that he had with us, bro. He just changed the whole culture in that short of a time, and his ability to like do everything. Like he he's he's one of the, like just the the rare personalities, rare human beings in the league. One hundred stand up dude. Um, but to get them at, at, you know, four, four million, like that, that's a huge deal. And it just, it talks, it means a lot, like from a standpoint of like who he is as a person, right. you know what I mean? Like he could have went anywhere and, and maybe made another 10, 12 million. But the fact that, you know, he and found us. play like he getting paid 300. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's the thing, that's bro. The, that's what he I'm gonna, saying. He going to play and outperform like and, get and, and have no check. care about it. Yep. You know what I mean? It ain't going to be like you might have somebody to be like, I ain't diving for that shit, bro. Y'all don't pay me for that. <laughs> Russ, Russ going to go 100%. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he don't ever And he going to play every game. Oh. Like, gonna play like with that's a dog right million. there. He going to play bigger than your country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like real talk. Yeah, no, for sure. Like that's how he is. Like it's crazy watching him play too. Yeah. Different from playing on the court, I ain't never did that. But watching him play, that man, that man is is is, is different. And he's durable. That's different. what I love about him, man. Yeah, you he's know he's gonna play. Speaking of Russ Steele, I want to ask you something real fast because we know your welcome to the NBA moment was against Dame Dollar. <laughs> we know that. But uh give me your give me give me your give me give me a story about your first time. <laughs> Ever going up against <laughs> Russell Westbrook? Did uh, he bop, bop your ass too? Uh, <laughs> first wow. time going against Russ, I don't necessarily remember like that first matchup. When I think about Russ, like my earliest stories about Russ, my second year, uh, we played the Lakers in the preseason. And you know, in That's sack, my team. That's my team. Okay. Let that out. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> and like, you know, in sack, when you play the Lakers or mm -hmm. you play uh the Warriors especially when I was like I mean we weren't we weren't good when I was a sack so like the fans were mainly <laughs> Lakers and Warriors fans yeah. you know it's a preseason game and it's cracking in there like because uh, Russ had just Russ had just got there like he just came over yeah right. he just came over so it's like it's like one of their first preseason games and I, I was starting you know I didn't start my whole rookie year so I'm like okay let's see what see what this bump is about <laughs> like the first play uh Russ came down and hit Fox. And mind you, Fox is dumb strong too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. Fox is dumb strong. Hit him, boom. 
laid it up, and Fox like, you know, moved back a little bit, and he rocked the baby celebration, <laughs> and the crowd, it was like, who was that rocker? I was like, I was like, it's the first play of the preseason. <laughs> What you mean? <laughs> like this what the, this what this is about? Yeah, like cuz they he rocking the baby talking to the crowd. It's going everybody standing up going crazy. I'm like, "Nah, this is this is crazy." You know what I mean? Like I don't know what's going on. Yeah. That's the thing about Russ though. Russ and Fox, my whole like cuz we played him when he was in Washington my rookie year and when I was with Fox the first half of the year we probably played him like two or three times. Those two always go at it because they're it. both like super athletes mm -hmm. like you know what i mean they're, they're super competitors so like watching those two go out i used to be like yo this is like a movie sometimes i just sit back like mm -hmm. y'all got it mm -hmm. i'll spot up hey fox if you need me i'm right here fam <laughs> i'm right here but uh that's like my first that's probably what i can remember most about yeah. for sure you want to uh go somewhere with me what you mean you want to go back down memory lane with me real yeah, come on, we can do that. We can do okay. that. We can do that. I'm gonna take, I want you to take me back memory lane all the way to the beginning. Okay. Think deep. Use your mental mind. Okay. Okay. <laughs> your mental mind. Let me know who's the first person that put a basketball in your hand and gave you that motivation and said, Tyrese, get your ass out there and ball. <laughs> Who was it? First person? First person. Man, probably probably Pops. Probably, probably Pops for sure. Pops for so sure. when I was born, he coached a middle school girls team. And so I just used to always be, like, from the minute I could crawl or probably born in general, I was just always with Pops. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, like, I like I, I always meet like I always meet girls who were on the team, like, randomly. Like, I don't remember them. I was a little kid. Like, one of them is, like, she was my babysitter growing up, so I'm with her all the time. But the other ones I don't really know like that. <laughs> but I remember, like, I was in high school. They used to be, like, Yo, you have no idea when you were like one years old, could barely like walk, probably couldn't even walk. He's like, your dad used to give you half court and we had to practice on the other half. Wow. Like, That's crazy. Like, Pops wow. like, nobody's allowed to go over there. Yeah. Wow. Just my just my baby. And then we over here, we gonna play. If we playing five on five, they doing it in half court. <laughs> Cause I'm on the other, side, on the other side, like that's just crawling crazy. around, you know? So that's just, <laughs> that's how I spent my whole life. Daddy, Boy so. had juice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what was what that team's playing? record? Yeah, I have no idea. I don't even know if they God. were nice. <laughs> they was great <laughs> in half court though. <laughs> no no court. full court, they great, court. nothing. Nah, I don't know nothing about their, Man, I don't know nothing about Bad transition team. Slow game. <laughs> good in the half court. <laughs> that's dope though. Shout out to your dad. Yeah, man. shout out Pop. Shout out to, what's your dad's name? John. John? John. Shout out to John. And he was man. coach middle middle school? Yeah, he was middle school girls basketball team. Okay. Yep, yep. He just coached middle school? Yeah, that's it. That was that's it. it yep. He didn't coach any uh any of your, your teams? No, no, no. He ref my whole life. So like, oh, okay. yeah, he's ref he ref basketball my whole life. And then when I got to high school he started doing volleyball and football mm -hmm. to make more more bread. But uh yeah, he he probably ref me about one or two times. But Did he? How was yeah. that? Nah, he don't give me no calls. Nah. <laughs> he don't give me no calls. He was supposed to I remember Middle school, he was supposed to ref one of our games. We were playing like a, like the way our, it, it works in my hometown is there's five middle schools. We all play each other twice. So it was like <laughs> the biggest middle school on my side of town played the biggest middle school on their side of town. And my dad was supposed to ref, and the parents from the other team was calling the school district like he can't ref this game. Like, <laughs> I was like, y'all, y'all tripping because that probably would have helped y'all. He's not doing nothing for me. He don't, he not giving me no calls. And he just gonna talk to me the whole game, just be like, yo, that move was weak. Yeah. You know, like, that's, just how, that's just how he yeah, is. Yeah, though. Come on, look at your dribble, yeah. sorry ass dribble. Yeah. Nah, that's a problem. Ah, damn, dad, come on. Hey, that's like, lit though. I, could you imagine if my pops was ref? Oh, with no. a ponytail with the too. Ponytail oh, slick back. Hell no, big. <laughs> <laughs> but that used to be the best. That used to be the best, like in high school, because my pops always sat like front row, like you know the bleachers in, in high school. They'd be right on the court, mm -hmm. you know what I mean. So he always knew the refs, you know what I mean. And the refs always knew who I was. But they used to like, they used to not give me no calls. My dad would just be like, "I'm gonna see you. I'm gonna see you tomorrow." You know what I mean? Because we gotta rep these kids' games tomorrow, so we gonna have to have a conversation why why this is going on. You know, that's just how it was my whole life. Shout out to pops, man. That is crazy. That's funny. I never want to see your daddy coach. Oh my. God, he wouldn't. He wouldn't be able he to. He can coach, coach you yeah. fishing. He, he got me. That. He got me. He can coach you fishing. No, he ain't gonna get pops all all the way break. You know, beat him up. He can coach you. Fishing. He can coach me fishing. He's a hell of a coach he at fishing. fishing. And he got the new boat now. Ooh, ooh shout out to the boat. Ooh, ooh ah. ah. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of family, the Lakers star Eddie Jones is actually your cousin, and you're also related to Jalen Suggs who plays for the Magic. But talk a little bit about how much that played an effect in your route to the NBA? Not at all. Not at all? Not in the slightest. <laughs> Why? 
because Suggs, we we grew up kind of like, because he's from Minnesota, he played for the same AU program when we were little. So we were always around each other, but we never knew we were like related to our parents kind of put it all together, mm. that there was like a relation there. Yeah. So to be honest, our parents could just be BSing and we're not even related. That's yeah. just how it's been right. for a while, you know <laughs> what I mean? And uh, But... I didn't, didn't play no part in it because like like Eddie, I've never met Eddie in my life. Mm. I've never met him in my life. So that's like my uncle's my uncle's kid. Mm -hmm. So I've never I've never met Eddie in my life. So uh, that didn't really play any part. I just that was the only thing that did for me is make me know that it was possible. Mm -hmm. Like I I could do it. Like if we he got some some of the same blood I got, it's possible for me to do it. So that's all it really did for me. Uh, but yeah, like I used to always tell that was like always my fun fact. Yeah. I always ask my fun fact. It's always I'm related to Eddie. Yeah, that, <laughs> he has no idea. And you still haven't met him? Huh? No. Nah. He probably crazy. had no idea who I was until like year two. Yeah. That's Honestly. Crazy. So yeah. I'll tell you what though, 260, you got a whole Oh, he know you. Yeah, oh, he's calling you. <laughs> he gonna call you. He gonna call you wanna hang out. Let's do a shoot around. You got around. a lot of cousins now, it's too bro. Late for Cousin, that. how you doing? <laughs> it's too late for Let that shoot around. Uh, I, I got a, a security service, sir. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to start hitting you with shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I need some trucks. I need some drivers. <laughs> I was gonna buy these big diesels. You know what I'm saying? I was gonna go call it. I was gonna call it. <laughs> Eddie Jones, sir. <laughs> what do you think? I can't. <laughs> it's not. I'm not. I'm gonna stop so we keep going. Then we won't be able to interview you. So let me get focused. And serious. <laughs> let me get serious. Go ahead. Oh, who up? Who up? Uh, next? Stick it to the high school stuff. Um, I always share, you know, to the to all the guests that I was a late bloomer in high school. And you had a, a, a prolific high school experience as well. You know, being Gatorade player of the year in, in Wisconsin, right? Yeah, yeah. You won it your senior year as well, right? Mm -hmm. That's crazy. You, you won Gatorade player of the year, but was a three-star recruit. Yeah. Did but, you, did like, did you see, did you, did that discourage you? You feel like you were still an NBA product at that point? No, 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 no. The NBA was never a thought. It was like, never it, it was like, in question? Like, of course, that's what I wanted to do, but yeah. like, the like to even think about it wasn't a thing for me and like three star oh that that drives me crazy because they threw that in when I got to college <laughs> you know what I mean because I got to college I was no star I was supposed to red shirt uh -huh. then I end up starting game two and the next thing I know uh middle of the game they're like it's a three star point guard I'm like three what are y'all talking about I didn't have no <laughs> stars I get that from? Yeah. ESPN had my name spelled wrong for the first like two weeks of the season Get I swear to That's God, crazy. I wish I was playing. I used to go on ESPN and it would say Tyrese Halliburton with two L. I'm like, who is he? I got no idea who he is. Like, so, like when I was, I, I, the, the reason is that, you know, you know how it is now with grassroots basketball. It's all about the circuit. Mm -hmm. So Nike's obviously the biggest, but there's Adidas, Under Armour, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I didn't do none of that. Like I played with like my local team. Like I had the opportunity. To, I could have played Nike. I could have played Under Armour. I could have played Adidas. But I was like, I'm just going to play with my homies because like I had, I had mid-major offers. I knew I was going to go to Northern Iowa. Mm -hmm. And I was like, shit, we're going to make it crack there. Like, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. And then my last AU tournament, my senior year, we played against Team Rio, who at the time had Scotty Lewis. I think he's on the Hornets now. And a kid named Brian Antoine, but they were both like five stars. Ball his life was following him around. And they playing us in like in, in bracket play. And I got Torched off. Ass. Oh, and it was like every coach in the country was there. Okay. And so I remember the game got done. And like I, I was like, man, ain't nothing. But in my head, I was like, yo, this is all to go up. This is all to go up. <laughs> Next thing I knew, I had like Nebraska offered me. Michigan wanted me to come on a visit. Iowa State offering me. All this stuff kind of coming around. And I was like, and I, I was sick because I couldn't go to Northern Iowa. I knew I was going there since I was like 16. Yeah. So I had to go to, I mean, I didn't have to, but you know, you got to kind of make that move. Yeah. And, and went to Iowa State. But, bro, when I got to school, I talk about this all the time. Taylor Horn Tucker, we went to school together. Uh, two other guys that were four stars at the time. I remember we were sitting in, a, in one of the uh, seniors' apartments, and they was asking us, like, uh, you know, what's y'all plan? How long y'all think y'all going to be here? Because we was like the highest recruiting class. And Taylor was like, a year. I was like, I'm going to the NBA. Uh, and then he asked the other two. They was like, yeah, two, three years, you know, I want to get to the league. Like, Tyrese, what you think? <laughs> so I'm probably have a good four-year career. <laughs> probably have a good four-year career. Uh, you know, try to fight to get to the NBA. You know, that was yeah. like my biggest thing. Because, like, you know, dudes from Iowa State, Monte Morris, George Niang, like, they had to fight to get where they are. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so that's just kind of the way I looked at it. I never would have thought that the NBA was going to be a – be a thing like mm -hmm. not a not a real thing at least for not not for like five years mm -hmm. when I got to school. How many years you did at Iowa State? I did State? two years. Two, two years. years. Yeah. Okay. Yep. But after my freshman year, I probably averaged like six points. But I remember you had to send in. You know, you, I don't know if you had to do this, but do you have to send in like a little thing that like GMs or like scouts will tell you what they think you'll get drafted in? Yep. Like yep. you had to send that in, 
and I sent it in. If it was like, I'm just making numbers up right now, but let's say it was 60 scouts. It was like 20 say that you're going to be a first round pick, 20 said I was going to be a second round pick, and 20 said I was going to be undrafted. Wow. I'm like, I'm not even going to go test the water. Like, why would I do that? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, right, right. I had to get nose surgery. I had a fucked up nose and mm -hmm. stuff. So I was like, got that fixed. And then I was like, I'll just come back for my sophomore year and I'll probably have a chance to go to the NBA after my second year. Mm -hmm. And you and Georges was on that team? No, no, no. He so he was gone. Yeah, he was gone. Okay. He just Iowa State. There ain't a lot of us. So just one year, like you said. Jo no, no, George did. George's. George's. Okay, George he did just four? turned thirty. God damn! Yeah, that was, twenty three. That's my young fella, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's my Nianga right there. When <laughs> did the NBA become a reality, though? Because it sounds like you really didn't have much expectations for maybe your first, second year. You're thinking you're going to be there for four years. Yeah. When did it kind of click? Like, you know. Oh, I, I I probably will make the NBA. Yeah, so like I remember after my freshman year, they always come out after the draft. Remember, they always come out with like a way too early mock draft of the next year, right. the following yes. year. Yep. I was like thirty-one to the Lakers, mm -hmm. and I was like, oh, oh. it might like crack. <laughs> I was like, oh, my, it might like crack. Am I go play LeBron? Yeah. Like, it's crazy. And then uh, we went to USA <laughs> for under nineteen that year, and it was like we probably one of the best. I, like, I know there's been a lot of great USA teams, but, like, that 19-under team, probably one of the best 19-under teams probably ever. It was, like, me, Cade Cunningham, Jalen Green, Scotty Barnes, Evan Mobley, Jalen Suggs. Mm. We had the whole top five from – Scotty – we had the whole top five from two years draft. Mm. Like, out of, there was 12 of us on the team, I think – 11 of us had played in the NBA. Mm. So, like, we beat – our average margin of victory is probably, like, 40 out there. Mm -hmm. But I just remember thinking, like, if these dudes are NBA players, so am I. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that was my biggest thing was, like, you know, like, when I got there, it was like, I didn't know anybody, but, like, you know, Jalen Green from, like, Ball His Life and, you know, YouTube and mm -hmm. Cade and all those guys. And so, like, I got out there, me and Cade, we really hit it off. Like, that's still one of my boys to this day. Like, we're mm -hmm. really close. Uh, and from there, it was like, we was competing hard as shit in practice. Like, hard as shit. Like, us two were just guarding each other the whole time. And I was like, I think I got a chance. And from there, we won. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm going to the NBA. Ain't nobody could tell me nothing. That yeah. Time. That's one of the greatest <laughs> thing that people don't get to see is those USA practices. Yeah, yeah. Cause like you literally are playing against the best talent around. Like, and for y'all it was you 19. So you're playing against the best of the best at 19. I, I had the similar approach when, when I played for team USA and, and being able to play against the top guys, see them live up close. And it's not all-star game. Like we not playing like it's all-star game. It's real like, bump. It's real bump dog. Like, so. and it's shit talking. It's like dudes holding, you know, grudges like uh we, we busted y'all ass this day like what y'all gonna come with tomorrow like it was shit like that going yeah, yeah, yeah. on so like yeah that that's that's dope that's dope you had that experience and y'all took that with y'all and and y'all all grew and who who's the one guy that didn't make it i think it's uh, oh uh isaac likely he played at oklahoma state okay uh then I th he was at ohio state last year uh but Big, strong guard. Yeah. He defended everybody for us. Okay. But, like, Let's yeah. just highlight him. Shout him out. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to Izzy. So. so we had this question for later in the show, but you guys are talking about playing for the USA team, and you're a part of a very young team that's going to be playing in the World Cup. And so obviously playing for, you know, your country and wanting to win gold, you know, that's obviously probably your main goal. But talking about those moments where you get to play with these other players and practice and compete, what else are you looking to get out of during this time playing for the Team USA? I think just establishing some things, you know, like like you said, there's a lot of us young guys are going out there. Uh, and I think it's going to be fun because, like, the way USA basketball is going, like, uh, I'm not calling – I'm not calling P and other guys like old, but they're old. you know they're older. You know what I mean? Like the last Olympics, Dang. KD was the best player on the team. Yo, How old is KD? Thirty-five. Yo, thirty-five. Is he? Thirty-five, thirty-six. Yeah. Really? Like this probably next year would probably be if he plays Olympics. That'll probably be his last Olympics. I would assume. You know what I mean? So there's got to be a transition that's getting ready to happen from like you know to like uh, us younger guys. You know what I mean? And I think what we're about to see this year is kind of setting the tone for that. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. uh, I'm really excited about it because. Uh, I think we have a bunch of young dudes who got something to prove, like not only like for ourselves, but to everybody, because you see our roster and none of us are like, 
necessarily have established that we're like a top 10 guy in the league or anything like that. We're all still got a lot of room to grow as players. So mm. uh, I think everybody kind of has a point to prove out there. Um, and, I, and I think it's, it's going to be fun because there's guys on the team with USA experience that have done it, you know, on, on obviously like 19 under, 17 under have done it, like growing up and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm just excited because, you know, everybody's kind of around the same age. And um, I think I'm just going to like we're going to help set the tone for what it's going to be moving forward. And I think if you ask anybody on our team, they're going to be like, yeah, we want to play the Olympics next year. But I think, you know, like a lot of guys are going to come next year. It's like, we want this to be our last one. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? KD and I'm, I'm sure Braun might think about it. Like everybody going to think about mm -hmm. it. You know what I mean? So uh, I just I've, I've always said I kind of want to be a part of that transition for USA basketball and just basketball in general, you know, to the new wave of guys for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's a fun experience too. I mean, you've done it already. You've been down that road, but it was it was a fun ass experience. We're, granted, when we did it, we had to stay on the ship and shit. I, I think I talked about it a couple episodes ago. We had to stay on the ship <laughs> and shit. Right? Yeah, yeah, with Debo. Yeah. Um, so it kind of took away from like the whole experience of being in another country and just embracing that culture. But uh, in terms of like just building a, a, a real like brotherhood with those dudes, man, it was a blast. It made me better. Because like, and, and again, you've been through this experience playing with Team USA, but you're with Indiana, you play a certain way, right? You're a scorer, you're a facilitator, like the ball, the, 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 the program, everything runs through you. But when you at Team USA, it's like, all right, he's great at this shit too. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna have the ball the whole right, game. Right. I'm not gonna, you know. So then like you, you, I feel like what I learned from it was like, oh, I can affect the game in so many different ways now. You know what I mean? Like that energy that I used to go towards, you know, trying to beat double teams and trying to break down my, my the best defender on a nightly basis. Like now I can use that energy to rebound. I can use that energy to go guard. Like I can re, uh, use that energy to, to simple shit, like back cut, right, learn right. how to be a better cutter, playing off the ball. Like you're going to have a blast with that experience. Yeah, you'll figure it out too. Yeah. Like, you, like with – like – me and Brunson are going to be out there to, like together. People are like, who going to start? Who going to play? Like for us, it's like. It don't we, matter. Yeah, it don't matter. Mm -hmm. One and two, like both of us have played off the ball before. Mm -hmm. He played with Luca. I played with Fox. Mm -hmm. So like now both of us have transitioned to being full-time on-ball guys where the ball's in our hands literally the whole game. But like for I think for both of us, it ain't going to be a problem for either of us like mm -hmm. to right. play off the ball when it's needed. Because like for me, like if I, if I get an inbound, <laughs> I say this all the time, if I get an inbound pass and I turn around and I see somebody in front of me, I'm just throwing the ball with like, yo, yeah. fam, I'll come get it from you on the other end. Like, I don't even have to waste my energy. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's not even, that's not for me. Right, right, right. Who, who's all on that on that team? Who's on that roster? Ooh, me, Brunson, Mikael Bridges, Brandon Ingram, Jaron Jackson, Anthony Edwards, oh, Josh a, Hart. That's a fun uh, team. Damn, Cam Johnson. Squad. Austin Reeves, Paulo Banchero, uh, Bobby Portis, and Walker Kessler. Walker Kessler. There it is. So, that's yeah, a that's fun the, team. Yeah, 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 yeah shit. Y'all under 25, 26. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, don't even, who's the, I don't even know who the oldest dude in our group is. Maybe Bobby? Bobby. Bobby for sure. Yep. Is there anyone on that list that you're excited to play with, like someone that you have not had the opportunity to share the court with, that when you look at that list, is there someone that kind of sticks out to you? Man, I, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously the easy answer is to say everybody. I'm just, I'm excited to play with Ant for show. Like, that was going to be my pick. Me and Ant yeah, are, yeah. Uh, we got drafted together. Uh, I see him as one of the clo guys I'm closer to, you know, in the league. Got damn near the uh, same deal, too, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just he got just paid, got too. Shout out to Ant. Yeah. Yeah. Shout out uh, Ant Edwards. But I'm, I'm excited for him, man, and excited to play with him because, like, I feel like our games flow off each other the right way. Mm -hmm. uh, and we was together at All-Star. And we just sat on the on the bench just talking shit the whole time. I had a blast with y'all, bro. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I said that in, the, in one of the last episodes. Yeah. Like, bro, because All-Star Weekend, like, I, I don't I don't want to sound like, sound crazy, but like, you, you, you do take it for granted. But mm -hmm. when I was there, like, that was the beauty of it. Like, damn, like, I really had a good ass time laughing with these dudes on the bench, bro. <laughs> we was just having a blast. Like, before the game even started, like, I'm like, oh, this is what this shit, like, this is what I miss right here. Like, uh, this Ant shit fun. Is hilarious. Like, like, exactly what you guys see on Twitter and social media all the time. Yeah. That is him. Like, that he is that, like, Personality. Bro, I even got to tell this story yet. Like, so we, remember Damon, Donovan just kept shooting from half court. Yep. He just kept shooting from half court. Me and, me and Ant sitting on the bench, because we ain't even really play that much like that. We was just, we was just log for the ride at that point. But Dane pulled up from like, man, like probably three steps behind the logo. <laughs> Aunt look at me. Did he hit you with the ooh, ooh, ah, ah. Aunt looked at me, he said, he shot that bitch from Yucatan. <laughs> I said, 
I said, Yucatan. I said, what did What did you just say? He's like, Yucatan. I said, Is that a real place? He's like, Nah, that's how far that bitch was. <laughs> that's how far that bitch <laughs> was. You could tell. <laughs> what? Like, no. Is that a place? Do you that? do you remember when uh, Coach Malone was drawing up the first play? Yeah. <laughs> or he was drawing up a play with Ant in it, yep. right? Funny as shit. He drawing up a play. Coach Malone drawing up a play. And I think like Bron, Ant Edwards. Uh, I know them two was in the game for sure. I can't remember who else was. But he drawing up a play and it was for Ant to throw a lob. And Ant was like, nah, coach, nah, nah, nah. I'm going to keep it 100. He's like, I'll do that. That I'll bitch going to go over the backboard. I don't throw lobs. <laughs> like, you don't want me to I do that? I don't throw lobs. I don't know how to throw lobs, coach. Yeah, can, Have somebody can. else do that. Thought All-Star was, All was hilarious. I know they want us to play harder and whatever, but, man, that shit was so funny. Jokic, <laughs> yo, bro, Jokic is hilarious. I said, yo, yo, Brate, I need a, I need a dunk tonight. Like, I, I need a dunk from you tonight. He's like, ooh. I don't think I got that one, Bate. And then remember Kyrie threw him a lob yeah. and he barely got off the ground. Kyrie was like, Kyrie was like, Kyrie wanted to play for real. Kyrie was like, yo, like, he was like, yo, yo, was like, yeah. I don't know what you, want, what you want me to do about that, bro. Ah, right. uh, that's funny. Yeah, that play with Ant, bro, that, that stuck out to me. Like, it, this dude is funny. It's a funny kid right here. Yeah. Who ended up throwing the lob? I think Braun. Okay. I think Braun threw the lob. That's but yeah, he, he was like, it, it was just like a humbling experience, like, Bro, you can't throw a lob. He was like, nah, coach, I'm going to fuck that up. <laughs> like, I can catch him all day. Yeah, Don't put me in that position. Him. I can catch him all day. <laughs> we talked about Ant and, you know, him, his inability to throw lobs. What, what's, like, some things that, like, you know, cer certain guys can do, but you is like, ah, that ain't even in my game. Like, for me, and it's funny, I know people are good at cutting. I do not know how to cut. I don't know how to back cut. <laughs> what? Like, I swear. What? I don't know how to back cut. You really had a back cut baseline 360 yeah, but I, this year. I know. And, and that's why that, cra that, that's <laughs> what why that play is so about? crazy. She's talking about. That's why that play is so crazy because, like, I was able to pull that off. Right. But I swear, every time I try to back cut, like, I run into somebody or, like, they hear me and they, they back up. Like, all cut they hear you. Yeah, head. like, I've, I've never been good at it. Paul George. I can't know how to cut. pump fake. Right. I'm not a pump fake guy. I, I haven't figured out like how to get people in the air and shit on my pump fakes. And then when and my third thing is like I can't jump. I'm a left right jumper. No, 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 right left. I can't left right. Really? If that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. my gather. Sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't. So like, you got to go off with the right. I gotta. Start I off. gotta start with the right, plant the left, and, and then, then lead. jump. I can't. I can't go with the left. That's me too, though. I mean, I can dunk <laughs> that way, just because I'm like I'm tall. I'll get by being right. tall, but like explosive. No, nah, I can't jump that way. Like, what's what's some some things in your game that's just like uh, ah? That's a great. It's question. not for me. I I really like the pump fake point. I, I no matter what I in my jab, I never get any, <laughs> every time I jab. It's Quiet. like you gotta catch him. <clears throat> yeah. You'd be like, <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? Why you? I thought that was right. I thought that was nice. Like right, you, ain't you, going for you that? like that? You didn't like that one? <laughs> but hard enough. I don't know, man. I think uh, I'm almost. I hate to say this. I'm almost like incapable of playing like a uh, like slow. Like I hate it. Okay. It drives me insane. Yeah. Like I be wanting to play basketball. To me, is made it's, to play like this. Up and down. So like if you went. Like, I don't know what Coach Kerr going to be on, but if he want me to walk it up, it ain't <laughs> happening for me. I'm trying. And that'd be the thing, too, to, to transition from not getting the outlet every time, you know, because I'd be, I be fiending for that outlet. Like, yeah. when we get the rocks, we get transition, I could do something. But if I just got to run, I don't know if I'll be used to, it. like, getting to the corner. That's going to be a little different. <laughs> it, it, is, it is interesting, though, like, how certain guys, like, pick up shit and, and, and certain guys can't pick up shit. Right. Like, I just never developed that part of my game. Just never developed. Like I don't know Maybe what it you can't is. Cut. Yeah, the back cut thing was weird. I've never like, been I, good but at now it. I'm trying to like think of a time. Like I've never Man, watched. You can't even see another time other than that. Hey, you've been in the NBA all these years. You never. You can't cut steel. I haven't figured it out, bro. Like the right. There's some dudes though. They got it down pat. Got it down pat. Oh, like score. My. Like some 18, dudes cut, 16 always, points, How are you bro? always in the right spot? Yeah, There's some dudes yeah. like you're always in the right spot. Like, I how feel, do you do it? I get, I get what you're saying. No, I don't know when to. And I watch, and I'm like. I'll try to get it down to a science, like, oh, he did it as soon as his head turned. And I'll try it, and, like, 
I take one step, and bro, they already like looking right at me. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. how you, how did, and then now I got poor spacing on the court. Like, I right, just look right. bad. Like, all right, fuck it. I'm gonna just try to get off his rebound down here. Yeah. here. That's a great point. <laughs> That's a great, I, I'm kind of the same way. If like, if I don't got the rock, somebody else driving, I'm just trying to spot up. Yeah. I'm trying to find, <laughs> where can you see me so I can get yeah. the three? Yeah. But they, Coach be watching film, he'd be pausing, he'd be like, yo, Tyrese, what are you supposed to do right there? I'm like, <laughs> I probably should have slid over a little more yeah. to get, that, get the three. He's like, no, you're supposed to cut. I'm like, yeah, and made, I, know about, I don't know about that one. Yeah. And it makes perfect Weird. sense when you like watching it and it slows down. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh, he wasn't even looking. Like, that was a perfect opportunity. Right, but right, in right. game, like, it, it, that shit does that, not right. work out. But for you, you you know, you average a ton of assists. You can pass to guys that are cutting. So yeah. I think that's a little bit more weird that you don't think you're a good cutter because you're obviously giving guys good looks when they're backdoor cutting yeah. and stuff like that. I'd be that. hot that dude, some, when dudes can't cut. Yeah. I'd be like, <laughs> I'm always jumping in the like, air. I'm always jumping. I jump and I know where you're supposed to be. Yeah. And then I look and you not there. Yeah. It's like, because yeah. I only got like, I don't even got a half a second to make this decision. <laughs> so if you not where you need to be, it's going to look crazy. Because I refuse to just land. You know when Coach, if coach ever told you like, if you jump in the air and you don't see nothing, just land. Just land, take the turnover. I'm like, nah. what do I look like? I'm going to make a play I'm going to put the ball in the air and make them jump for this month before I <laughs> Land with the right. Ball. You know how that crazy go look. You bet you jump off one foot to pass it and just land on the ground. Yeah, yeah it's like nah, that. nah, nah, nah. There's no way. Yeah, I'm gonna messed up my whole this play. Shit. It's gonna be a play. What one coach way or told you to land? What do you mean, coaches? Oh, no, like like dead, dead ball turnovers. You don't want live ball turnovers. And he jumped. Mm. And he never land. heard that. No, I've never. I've heard not to jump when you pass. Well, like, right. Good, good yeah, thing I mean, that's the main that. point. But that's yeah. the when you do it. That's the reason. Say, like, you know all right, you, you you all right. Let it go. You're gonna jump pass. All right. Well, then now just take the turnover. Yeah, like, don't yeah. do that. That's goofy. You don't <laughs> that's gonna look that's crazy. Horrible. They're gonna be killing me on the internet. No way. Because then if you do it twice, then it's like, oh. It's like he point shaving. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to look real crazy. Shh, no point shaving. I really just take the turnover and just throwing it away. Like, we'll, we'll try to get a stop that way. Yeah, just put it in the air. If yeah. he don't jump for it, that's his fault. Right. Make him look bad. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, like, catch it. Like, bro, what the bro. fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I love when dudes do that, huh? There's so many dudes in the NBA be like, yo, what you I'm the king to? of that, bro. Like, I make like, a bad pass and, <laughs> yeah, like, I'll be, be quick to deflect that shit. Like, oh, yeah. You every are, time. Bro. I don't never ever turn over. That's my fault. I do do that And as soon as we get to the back, I'll be like, yo, fam. Yeah. That was, that was, that was my bad. I look crazy. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looking bad. You know, because they, they always go pan to you. Yeah, and they're going to be like, Tyrese is yelling at him. Like, he must have not did the right thing. I'd be like, yo, fam, you're going to have to take that one on the internet. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> my bad, my bad. Yeah, yeah I made bad. bad passes and, like, in the moment, it's like, bro, what the fuck? Catch that shit. But then when you go to the bench and, like, let me let me see what happened. It's like, oh, shit, that's all me. Like, no yeah, way yeah. he getting And that. there's always one teammate <laughs> who's like, <laughs> yeah. like, you know, one teammate, like an OG or something that's at the end of the bench, like, right. yo, fam, <laughs> that was on you. He's like, you don't even got to watch it. He's like, yeah, right. you're right. Yeah, you're right. Right. You're, right. you're right. Yeah, my bad. So we're talking about skills and, you know, earlier you mentioned you're a big Twitter guy and right now you have a pinned tweet, uh, which is scouts kind of making fun of your jump shot mechanics. And so my question is, is that something that you kind of laugh off or is that something that you use for motivation? You know, because a lot of people said that that wouldn't translate into the NBA because you do have an unconventional you know, way of shooting. Talk a little bit about how you kind of deal with those criticisms and so forth. Uh, man, I'm, a, I'm honestly like a really petty person. So like I hold on to everything, like everything. Like if I go through my bookmarks right now on Twitter, it's going to be like if I get to 20, first time I'll scroll for a minute, but once I get to 2020, it's going to be <laughs> nothing but people talking about the way I shoot and and like Knicks fans saying they shouldn't draft me and all this stuff. Like I almost, yo, I have my boy, thank God for my boy Trev. Shout out to Trev. I almost went on a victory lap the other day and was uh, about to quote tweet all these crazy tweets that was coming out about me yeah. from the draft like around draft day I was about to be like oh like it's draft day I know there's a lot of criticisms let's see who was wrong on me <laughs> and I was about to tee off but I was like Shut it's up. not that it's not the time like I'm holding on to him for the right moment but <laughs> I, I <laughs> I'm definitely gonna do it one day like, really I'm, gonna be, bored. I'm gonna be bored one day and just let it retweet go retweet like yeah. 260 of them but bro they used to kill me with like oh my like I remember Swish Cultures put out a video and it was me shooting, like uh, catch and shoot jumpers pre draft. And dudes was commenting, like, he shoot that shit in the league. They just gonna throw it back in his face. Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm like, bro, it's not a video. Like, in 2K, if you hit square, you got to shoot it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I can change. Well, if, if, if I'm about to shoot it in your hand right there, I'm, I might move it a little bit. I might try to right, get to right, a different right. move. Yeah. They just think it's a video game. Like, I'm just supposed to shoot it, and motherfuckers are just going to throw it right back in my face. Right. Like, that, that's just, but I'm, I'm a very petty person when it comes to everything. Like, yeah, I do that. Like, I, I don't call dudes out in interviews before. Yeah. Like, I don't have interviews and been like, yo, can I read you a little part of an article you wrote like two years ago? He's like, yeah, what are you, like, what are you sure. talking about? I'm like, you told me, you said that I needed the perfect situation to succeed and that I would never be a true point guard in the NBA. And he was like, damn. I'm like, it's all love though. I'm yeah. just that type of person. <laughs> like, I just want people Say to know. Say Mr. Petty. Yeah, yeah, I'm super. I'm gonna change your nickname Mr. Petty now. Duh. Mr. Petty. <laughs> bad. I'm bad, I'm bad. Have you, have you had that same, like you've had that same shooting mechanic since high school? Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was a younger, it looked the same, but I just had to like, you know, you catch it and you gotta like dip to your waist, like yeah. little kids and stuff. Like, it was always like that. Yeah. And when I got to high school, uh, my AU coach, I had to got a new AU coach, Coach B, he runs my AU program now. Uh, but we, we used to do mic and drill all day. Mm -hmm. Like when I say all day, y'all probably think I'm playing. Like if we have an hour and a half practice, the first hour is mic and drill. Oh, mic and drill. Like I would do, I would do fit, make 50 in a row. You got to make 50 in a row, then do 20 push ups, 20 sit ups. And as y'all could tell, I was cheating like a motherfucker on them push-ups and sit-ups. <laughs> but I'll just get back to the mic and drill. We'll get back to the mic and drill, make these layups. Uh, so that kind of took away from like the dip of my jump. Like now if you pass to me here, I could, I know I can just release it. Yeah. Uh, but like my whole life, no matter what level I've been on, a coach has like started to think that they're gonna change it. Mm. And then like they they haven't. You know, like uh, I think one of the uh, good story when I got to NBA is when I got drafted, I wasn't supposed to slide to 12, but I ended up you know, getting there and Luke didn't really know anything about me because I wasn't in their like range of what mm -hmm. he thought. And one of the stories he told me uh, recently was that Coach Kerr had called him because I worked out for the Warriors uh, and Coach Kerr called him and was like, we love that kid. Don't ever touch his jumper. Mm -hmm. Like, it, like, don't touch it. And Luke was like, are you sure? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah, yeah, don't touch it. And that just kind of allowed me to, you know, Luke just kind of let me do my thing. And from there, nobody's ever, you know, messing me about it. Mm -hmm. That's crazy because there are some guys in the league that have had to, like, change their whole yeah. jump shot and it has, has not worked out that yeah, well. Yeah, I'm curious because you're in Indy. It, does, is Billy around? You know who Billy is? No, I don't know who Billy is. Older, he's an older guy. He, he's, like, their shooting coach. Um, Still? He was when I was there. I was That's at, why I was asking. If I was like, I never around. met a He was an older really. guy when I was when I was there, um, but I had to work on my jumper a little bit my rookie year. Yeah, I was getting a lot of like just bad rotation. Right, and uh, so they had Billy, and I worked with Billy while I was in Indiana of just getting a more you know traditional rotation. Um, but I had to change my jump shot around my my, my rookie. And that's got to be hard. Like it's tough because it like tough. you, I don't know what you shot your rookie year, but like, like twenty. Eight, oh, okay, then probably wasn't that hard to switch it. But it was wide but, open. But some dudes be missing. Some dudes be shooting like thirty, you know, thirty three percent, whatever. Yeah. And like the gap from thirty three to like get to like thirty eight, in like how much money that's gonna make you in the NBA is like mm -hmm. so significant. So when people trust that and change it to me, I'm always like, wow, kudos to you. Like, yeah, that's crazy to me. Well, I had nothing but time because my rookie year from my second year, like I was always just a corner guy. Like, right. <laughs> it's, it's, it was funny <laughs> talk about that. Cause Swaggy P, that's yeah, the Swaggy I, I, P I, thing. That's... I was a corner guy, uh, <laughs> so I, <laughs> so I was sticking the corner and like that was my role, just be a three and D guy. Yeah, so right. I had like a ton of time that off season just work on my jumper. Like I got up thousands of shots, um, but it was just yeah, just focus on just you know getting rid of that nasty rotation. It it, it did help. Yeah, it for definitely sure. helped. My percentage went up my second year, and then from there it was you know I was a bucket behind the three point line. The rotation you, you said. The rotation, yeah. Were you seeing like more? I used to have, stuff? yeah. Like it hit the rim and it bounced. And I like, used to wow. have like a nasty like side rotation, bro. When I shot, it was like a nasty like I was getting like I don't know if it was too much thumb involved. Probably yeah, it's typical. But it, the ball was literally like like this, bro. And they used to talk like it was it was to a point where I almost was like self conscious of it, like right. Well, at least you didn't lose your confidence. Like I was close. Ball. Shooting it, watching it. like Because not only, like like I said, I shot 29%, but they, those were damn near like wide open wide three. Open. <laughs> what was it? You pass it, nigga don't even close. Like, yeah. Hell no. Nah. Right. That'd be the worst. Hell no. Nah. What happened? You'd be like, damn. Like, I don't know. They was like. wide open. It was like, damn. Like, I don't, this three ball might not be for me, but your repetition, you get better at that. Jackie, you a big sports fan. How crazy do you get with your fandom? Do you ever paint your face for games? 
P, you know I get wild at the games, but you know damn well I ain't painting my face. Okay, I'm not doing none of that, but you do know I go crazy at the games. I yell, I scream, I holler, I throw stuff. I do it all, man. You know that. Yeah, I've seen him get a little too crazy at some of your games, and honestly, a little too active when we're sitting courtside, but I always know that you're going to be wearing a jersey. Why wouldn't I wear a jersey, Dallas? I love my jerseys. I wear basketball jerseys when we go to basketball games. I wear football jerseys when we go to football games. I go to I wear my baseball jerseys when we go to baseball games. All I do is wear jerseys all day. At this point, I ain't gonna never stop wearing jerseys. Well, if you like jerseys like my guy right here, have you heard about Klarna? It's the new smart way to pay when you shop online for tickets and merch from your favorite teams and more. Now, when you make a purchase at any of your favorite stores, either online or in store. You can spread the cost into four smaller payments without interest or fees. Just look for the pink Klarna badge at checkout or download the Klarna app to shop and spread the cost today. Klarna, shop smarter, ball harder. California residents loans made or arranged are pursuant to a California financing law license. So there's a lot of people watching this show <laughs> that think they're good shooters. You know, they're playing in their pickup games. <laughs> Or their church league, like myself, even though I don't think I'm a great shooter. I'm a streaky shooter, but not a great shooter. But what would you guys say, being in the NBA, like if you were talking to a regular fan and they're watching the game, like this dude's shooting 29%, and he's getting paid to do this, this, and that. What's the biggest difference, or explain to a fan, you know, why shooting or being a shooter in the NBA is just completely different? Because, bro, it's the fucking elite of the elite athletes that you're shooting against like you're you're going against some of the best athletes the best jumpers the fucking best the quickest guys like and for you to be able to get that shot off and be efficient like you think of like Steph situation right his conditioning is so good for as much as he runs around and as far as he shoots like that shit is impressive and that's very hard to do even like you, you just put it in perspective. Like, we're all NBA guys. Like, I can't even do that. You know what I mean? And I think I'm an a elite shooter. You know what I mean? Like, but he's in a whole nother class. And for fans to think, like, that shit is easy or that, that shit is doable, what we do, like, nah, bro. It is extremely tough to, like, just to get your shot off. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, some guys in the league are good shooters, but they're not even comfortable, like, getting their shot off if they're not wide open. For sure. You know? Sure. Like, they, they just can't get those shots off. Yeah. Unless they're wide open. So, it, it, it's, bro, it's it's one of the hardest things to do is to shoot in the NBA. Dudes be tired. Uh, motherfuckers be tired, too. Like, you're playing a whole game. You got to – not only are you – like, they guard you, you got to stop them, too. You got to stop them. And, like, the league is becoming, like, a switching league. So, mm -hmm. like, so, you know, I, sometimes you get switched on to a big. You know, they're, like, posting you up, like, putting their forearm in. Like, you you know, that, that stuff adds up over the mm -hmm. course of a series – or, of course, of games. And you see it in the playoffs all the time when guys start to struggle over the course of it because they're just getting beat up. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right, like, right. Yes, I mean – I know I, I never played in the playoffs, but you see that happening to people. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm talking like I got you. Like, I don't got the insight there, Too but I can talk to you on a game, on a game level. You feel yeah. me? I can but, talk on a game level. But even, but even like, but even like with so much switching going on, like say you're guarding someone that's 50, 60 pounds heavier than you. Like you're guarding them. It's a big dude. And it, it's a bigger dude, right? So like you're using all your might to stop him and shooting is all touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now like you're riled up, like trying to defend this strong dude. And then you come down on the offensive end and now you got to shoot with touch from deep. Like you might shoot strong just cause you like, damn, like I was just wrestling with this motherfucker <laughs> or vice versa. Like now you tired, That's you crazy. gassed. And like, now you got to take a jumper. Like it, it, it's, it's, it's it's so it's it's a tough thing to do to shoot in the NBA, bro. They don't talk about depth perception either. That's like mm -hmm. a thing that people don't understand. Like shooting in an like it's so like when you when you see guys working out like in a high school gym or like you know where we have to work out in the summer. You're not you're not getting an NBA arena in the middle of the summer. Like th there's a wall behind it. You know what I mean? Like you're used to mm -hmm. playing like that mm -hmm. when you when you grow up. Like all of our high school gyms, they have a wall behind the but like. Instead, it's seats. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean. So it's people don't understand like how different that is. Like mm -hmm. so when you have to like transition from shooting in a closed gym environment to going to shoot in an arena. Like now, some people they're like, I don't care. Like you know what I mean, that doesn't bother them. Yeah. But I would say for the normal person, they'd be like, especially if there were fans back there, they'd be like, oh, sh like this looks a little different. You know what yeah, I mean? That's super underrated. Yeah. And I think that's why. Were you you weren't in the bubble, right? No, I wasn't in the bubble. Yeah. I think that's why the bubble, like why people shot so well in the bubble, because yeah. there was a backdrop. Yeah, you know what exactly. I mean? It wasn't no 
no stands or nothing behind there. So it was like you was in the summer shooting again. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why the the bubble, like the shooters were so efficient. Um, you know, everybody was shooting at a high clip in the bubble. I, I think that's why. That's a good point you brought that yeah. up. I hear guys say all the time, like, this is a shooter's gym. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just hoop. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, I think some gyms is like, you know, they're, they're going to be more motherfuckers at the game. So right, right. then you go, right, you know right. I mean? like, y'all go shoot well because, you know, you try to show out. Like, right. It's a bigger game. But I don't, I don't know. Some guys get into that. But I yeah. Know, yeah, I don't think it bothers me too much. Yeah. A gym, like you say, a gym is a gym to me. Exactly. Same. As long as the measurements is all lined up, I'm good with it. Yeah. So, so I, yeah, I don't think it has too much to it. You're, you're a great shooter. And. Were you one of those kids growing up that was waking up before school, getting a thousand shots in, or were you more of just like a gamer? Elementary, middle school, and nah, I, I mean, you just played around like in the park. When I got to high school, I started probably taking more serious, like going early in the morning and stuff like that. Uh, started like, I had to like meet with the principal and get like a, a halt, like a morning pass. So like the janitors would let me in so mm-hmm. I could get in the gym. Uh, but I will say like our high school did a good job. Like we did like little things like, like called like shooting league where we would do like shooting games for like a whole morning, like mm-hmm. two, two, three times a week. Uh, but I think that, that yeah, it definitely plays a big part in it for sure. I don't mm-hmm. like People like kids always ask like you know how do I yeah, that's, do this how do I like ain't no secret recipe mm-hmm. like I mean a lot of us have God given talent that mm-hmm. you know that allows us to do this but like the guys who go above and beyond like they just work harder than ever. you know what I mean like right. they just work unbelievably hard at a unbelievable pace like right. the reason Steph can do what he does is because he works hard as shit like but he also like. Everybody I know who works out with him says he works at a game pace at all times. He's in the best shape. You know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. there's no secret as to why he can do what he can do or just anybody in general. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have a, like, what was, like, your tick as a kid? Because for me, when I was coming up in Palmdale, it's a small city. Not, not, you know, it's not much, not many, if any, success stories coming from there. So that was, like, my tick as a kid. And I was always seeking to get better, like, I just knew, I didn't know I was going to be in the NBA, but what I did know, I was going to give myself the best chance to get there. Like from shit to, you know, the jump souls. I, we got this long ass street, uh, uh, 57th street um, in Palmdale, which is the, the neighborhood I grew up in. Um, that was the street that I lived on. And it was a desert right next to my, my house. Literally like two houses down was a big ass open desert. And I would go into the field, try to find the biggest rocks, Right. And put them shits in my backpack. And it in Palmdale, if you don't know, it's like 100 degrees sometimes. Like it's super hot, scorching out there. But I used to like put it, put these big ass rocks in my backpack, throw the jump soles on and just run up and down the street like five, six times. Like I used to just go until I was just exhausted. I like, couldn't go no more. But that was just my tick as a, at an early age. And that was like for me, like. That's when I knew, like, all right, I'm this basketball shit is just different to me, right. and I carried that with me like every stage of like, all right, how can I get better? How can I do this? Like, what what was some like tick things for you? I want to I want to start asking guests this, just like deeper dive. Yeah, on right, right, right. That makes sense. So when you're saying tick, like some that like drove me to like this is what. Yeah, like, you know what I mean. Like when you knew to yourself personally, like, like I'm I'm fully invested on this basketball thing. Yeah. Ooh, that's a great question. I would probably say when I was in high school, um, like, and seeing all the kids, like, you know, because I grew up in a, a social media culture, mm-hmm. right? So, like, there was always these kids on on social media. And then, uh, like, I would run into them. Like, we play them on this, like, in, in the AE world. I'm like, he's not really nice like, like that. that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like he do <laughs> like he be he he do the little day in the life and they recording him waking up and going to the gym. Does he do that every day, yeah. or is he just doing that because the camera was there? You know what I mean? I'm like, nah. Like if I could do that, if I could like be a, like more serious about it, like because I was always I wasn't the kid at the top that was like trying to stay there. I'm the kid that's way at the bottom trying to like chase that. You know what I mean? So my mindset was like, all right, when I see bro off Instagram. I'm gonna be prepared. Mm-hmm. Like, right, right. I'm gonna be ready. There's no doubt in my mind. Mm-hmm. So that that was the biggest thing for me was like I knew I wanted to play college basketball. Like because I didn't start really taking it like serious, serious until I got to high school. And I knew I like college basketball was the big thing for me. Like I needed to play college basketball. Like for me, it was like, man, I see how all the best players in the world, they just like we talked about earlier, they just work harder than everybody else. So like mm-hmm. there can't be no secret recipe. Like 
Like, I just got to do that. And like, but being honest with y'all, if I was more serious about it, I would have been like lifting and taking all that serious. Yeah. And, but my mindset is like a 14, 15 year old kid was like, I'm not touching that weight room. So I'm just going to go double, <laughs> double court. Double you know what I mean? Work. Like, I I'm going to go like twice as hard on the court. Right, like, right, right. try to do like stuff that people probably not doing because they got to lift after. But like, yeah. I'm not going to lift. So, right. like, I'm just going to be in here doing touch like lifting. Like, at touch all. stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I was not I like working gym. out. Uh, yeah. I was not touching. Like, when I got to college, I was 6'5, 155. I was, I was little Six, too. Five, so I'm with you. I was a little five. dude. I was a little dude all the way up until. Shit, ten years in the league, yeah. damn near. Like I, I was, I was a scrawny dude too. So I'm with you on that. That's crazy. I it was to... overrated to me at that point. But, yeah, I mean, yeah, <laughs> my right. game wasn't built to right. be in the weight room. <laughs> he always says this though that once he's retired or whenever that day comes, that he just wants I'm to get to like yo. And I'm like, really? all right, we gonna yes. see. Like he, he wants to be that. like, yes, he gonna look stupid, <laughs> straight stupid. Anyways, I want to take you. <laughs> With the draft just passing just now, which is always a great experience for you two, you know, y'all had that experience. But uh, I want to ask you a question about 2020 when the Kings drafted you. How was them workouts? Because this man over here had 18 workouts. Yeah, I heard you say that the other day. I'm yeah, like, he had 18, but but he, his, Draymond Green had 21. So... We First got, person we got somebody that, that beat, beat him. Yeah. And I want to know with that, how many workouts and did you play with one of my favorite point guards, uh, LaMelo Ball? For me, so during COVID, I never had a workout with anybody. Like all of us were doing workouts on like Zoom. You know what I mean? Like dudes, That's like, different. like dudes were doing workouts on Zoom. Nobody worked out, to, <laughs> nobody worked out together. Oh, but because I was like a lottery guy, like I only, I had like, four workouts like in person where they yeah. like flew to Vegas. We went to like breakfast and then they would come watch me work out. But like we'd have to, the gym have to be cleared out for me to work out. And it would always be like, you know, whoever, whoever the organization brought, there are like people over on this side of the court. And then on this side of the court would be like my agent, my brother, and one of my best friends. Mm -hmm. And they would be in there for like my pre-draft workouts. Like I think I worked That's out crazy. for Minnesota, Chicago, Golden State, Detroit, that might be it. That that might be everybody. Yeah, I think ah. that you did live or your your whole that, rookie that year team workouts. I did it summer. all. Okay. It was only those ones, and like it would just be eighteen. Was like, late. Even Boomer. when I be seeing dudes work out like now, because I was there for all of our pre-draft workouts this year, I'm like, man, like y'all y'all really grinding. Like y'all flying to every. <laughs> Y'all flying to every every city to get, yeah. you know do these workouts and like for me it was like they came to me like I went about my day the exact same I yeah. just instead of chef making breakfast I had to go to the hotel <laughs> yeah. I had to go to the Four Seasons and meet y'all downstairs for breakfast you feel yeah. me so like my, nothing changed in my schedule like I just did the same thing and uh, but it was a crazy like crazy experience like yeah. like because then you would meet with them they'd watch you work out they'd leave and like. And be like another team coming in in a week, but like my pre-draft process, like most guys, their pre-draft process, they get done March Madness, like get done in March, and the draft is in June. For me, COVID started in March, and I didn't get drafted till November. Damn. So like maybe for, and Wisconsin was never really shut down from COVID. Like mm. you know, it wasn't really a thing. So I, I had broken my wrist in college. I probably got my brace off at the end of, at the end of March, early April. And then I literally did pre-draft workouts from April to November. To November. Like, you know, just like the pre-draft intensity is like, is different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Compared right. to what you would do normally. Yeah. So, man, that shit was so long. I didn't like, get to work with my boy Mello. But no, luckily, you only had five. five. Never worked out with anybody. Never, like, well, I he never didn't know yeah. I never even, had five I had never even seen, I'm not, like, I had never seen LaMelo or Ant, or Ant until we played them. I've yeah. never seen them. Never seen in, them. In person, ever. Wow. Like almost mo majority of dudes in my draft, yeah. I never had seen them in person. That like is until crazy. we played, then I'm like, oh, that's what bro looked like. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> I had no idea, you feel me? <laughs> that's what bro yeah. looked like. 18 though, bro. Like, so I was, I literally felt like I was like in the league. Like, and it was a different experience because like before then I'd never really traveled outside of like playing for my college. Right. You know what I mean? Even before like my college, I went on like, three AAU trips and my first time ever flying was with you when we went to Pittsburgh, mm -hmm. I think. Another story, but that was like AAU, but I was like 17, 18 years old, my first time flying. And then now fast forward, like I'm on my own, like it was, it was a real grown up situation where I'm on my own, I'm going to these workouts, I gotta catch flights, I gotta, <laughs> you know, I'm getting in late at night, I'm tired, but you know, I gotta wake up early for another workout. Like it was really like, and I was doing this like weeks at a time. 
three weeks here. Like I'm going this city, this city, that. She was like living on the road. Basically. I was living on the road, bro, and it was it was it was like a legit growing up. I'm 18, 19 years old. Like yeah, no, nah, that's OD. Because dudes be saying that. Dudes be like, yo, because like you know, CAA guys, CAA guys work out where at Proactive, right Proactive, in LA. Yep. But like I, you know, one of them come work out for the Pacers or something. Like oh, you been in LA? He's like, bro, I haven't been in LA in three weeks. I've been on the road. Like, yeah, they can't like you know teams be giving the gear. Right, like, right, right. They be like, I can't even. I can't I got even room in my it, bag yeah. for this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take the gear. You just take I'm what like, you want. Is, you know, I never had to do it, so yeah. I don't like. I don't. I don't know any different. But I always say like, like the, especially the dudes like eighteen is crazy. Like, eighteen was crazy. But that's that's really insane. Yeah, like dudes, but dudes be doing like <laughs> high teens. Early twenties, I'm like, so yeah. you don't work out for it. every. Yeah, but it was, to. it was because like I was, I was, I was ranked like mid second In round that, oh, okay. to like late first round. That's where I started at. Right. So I just took the gamble on myself, but I took the same approach. Like I never, like I've seen like Xavier Henry, right? Watched him at Kansas, like watched his college shit. It was like, all right, if I get a chance to play against him, I'm gonna go at him. Yep. Sure enough, Xavier Henry was in like ten or 12 of my workouts. Like, so I, like, I always was seeing Xavier. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I'm like, all right, it's bet. Yeah, that's got <laughs> easy. No, that's, that's, that's fair though. Cause like, I wish I had that opportunity with yeah. you. know what I mean? Like, I wish I had the opportunity to compete against some guys. Like, yeah. Cause like uh, Detroit, I thought Detroit was gonna pick me for show, but I knew it was like me and Killian probably had a good chance of it being one of us. Mm -hmm. So like, I was praying to God that we got to work out together. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted that so bad, but we just, like the whole time, we yeah. just was one on oh. Just because of crib. COVID shit going on. Yep. Was it a big adjustment for you? Like one thing that always impresses me just watching him throughout his career is just like the amount of things he has to do every day. His scheduling, he's a pro at not getting a lot of sleep and being able to wake up in the morning and act like he has energy and he genuinely does have energy. But for you, Damn. what? Yeah. Not 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 going on those workouts when you did kind of start in the NBA was that an adjustment period for you on like I gotta get up I gotta go fly I gotta go play here I gotta practice here I will say one thing that the pre that pre draft process did for me is I was living I was living it was just me and my brother you know what I mean so I did have to kind of figure out you know like uh, just taking care of certain things like getting stuff for the crib like going grocery shopping uh, he handled most of that but you know just like stuff for the room. Just little little stuff of adulting that they don't tell you. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So uh, that that I think the long pre draft process kind of helped in that way, mm -hmm. versus having to like I didn't have to fly everywhere, but I was like I was in I moved to Milwaukee, which is only like two hours from my crib, but I was there dolo. I was there with my brother, and then we moved to Vegas together, um, and so we were out there just kind of didn't have nobody else around. We just kind of mm -hmm. was doing our own thing, and uh, that kind of just. Hey, let me find interest too, like stuff I like to do when I'm, I think I did that for everybody during COVID. Like, what do you like to do? Mm -hmm. Cause you can't, you can't just go anywhere you want. You know what right. I mean? You got to figure yeah. out your interests and stuff like that. And that's helped. Cause I think a lot of stuff that I laid the groundwork for that I like to do, even some as little as like, I like streaming. I like, I like gaming and stuff. Like I learned how to do that all during COVID. I just sit there and watch YouTube, like how to videos, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. ain't nothing like YouTube university. Speaking yeah. Of see, yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of streaming, we got to start streaming. We, we got to start streaming. We got to start, start streaming playing. again. We've been streaming yeah. and we supposed to shout out our streams, right? Shout out. Sorry. I'm streaming. <laughs> Follow me on Twitch under actor gang. Follow PG <laughs> under YG. Tracy. Tracy. Well, how you say it? Yeah, YG. Tracy. Yeah, Tracy. Yeah. Yeah. What's yours? What's yours out there? It's just my full name. Tyrese Halliburton. Come on. I don't got no interest in names. Yeah. Follow us all on Twitch. What you streaming? I be playing a lot of like I be playing, I play 2K a bit, uh, but mainly I, oh, lately I've been playing a lot of WWE, which sounds crazy. That's, yeah, that's like the best game because for me because I know if I could get four like four of my homies, I've been playing WWE since I was like five years old. But yeah. I know if I get four of my homies around to play and I get and I and you play five games, I'll teach you how to play for five games. After that, you got a chance to beat me. Yeah, like you know, and like. 2K and this is an easy Madden, game like, to learn, or yeah, it's easy to learn. Like you, you can just pick it up. Controllers there, huh? You got a lot of broken controllers. Why? Because I'd be losing the dudes at WWE. Too many buttons you push and breaking your <laughs> controller. Uh, nah, nah, I don't break controllers that often. <laughs> I, I'm, I feel like I'm kind of level headed. I can't do the fighting game. I break my controller too much. Really? Yeah, pushing too many buttons and don't know, and then I get frustrated. 
throat. <laughs> I'm not a. I'm not a. I'm not, the, I'm not that guy. I can do the one button, the easy. Yeah. Well, Call of Duty, a lot of buttons. Call of Duty, a lot, Duty, but a lot of buttons. That's a different frustration. I will say the WWE's is entertaining. Though. I used to play them a lot as a yeah, kid. Yeah, too. the games be fun because everybody watched them when they was a kid, so yeah. it brings them back to when they were. A you kid. remember like the Smackdowns? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Here comes the pain. Yeah. All the games, I still play them to this day. Yeah, I play yeah, no, all those wrestling games. We gamers up here, so you 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 fit right in with this combo yep, with us. Yeah, that's me. You good. I don't know how many other gamers behind there. <laughs> okay, okay. TD is one. Shout out to TD, being a gamer, nobody else. Okay. okay. <laughs> Back to the show. So, moving on. So, to the show. <laughs> yeah, I was like really show. locked in, too. Like, okay, wait. I brought it in on you, dude. So I brought you in? Okay. Hey. Yeah. Come on, Dallas. Got something so, you get drafted by the Kings, and things are going well. Uh, but as we all know that the NBA is a business and you ended up getting traded midseason in year two and you've moved on since. But there was a quote where you said that you cried your eyes out. And so I just want to ask you, like, what bummed you out the most um, about what happened with the Kings? All right, I'm going to preface this to say. If somebody sees this snippet and they say Tyrese cannot give up the trade, I'm about to go crazy. Because <laughs> it, uh, it always happens. I can't get, like, I get asked a question, I just answer I, I had to ask it. No, for sure. You have to ask it. That's, I mean, that's what people want to know. For me, it was, the biggest thing was like, the Kings hadn't been to the playoff. I had never seen the Kings in a playoff game ever up until this year. Like I was, like Kobe and Shaq were together. I was probably like, four or five, but I wasn't really tapped in the NBA at that, you know what I mean? I was right. little, so I'd never seen it before. And so going to SAC, it was like, I had the, like, I was like, in my mind, I was like, I get the opportunity to build something here. Like, I was excited about that. Like, like I wanted to be part of the group with like Fox and those guys to be like, we were the ones who turned this around and made it like, people were interested in the Kings again. You know what I mean? Cause like for a while, and like the truth is that like, Kings fans and Kings in general, they're always like, have been for my whole life have been looked at as like, almost like a laughing stock. You know what I mean? But their fans are like, they probably have like the best, like highly elite fans in the NBA, like mm -hmm. top five fan base in the NBA. And uh, so for me, it was like, I want to help build something here. You know what I mean? And that like around that time, that was during the year, like James was talking about getting out of Houston uh, ben was trying, you know, trying to get out of Philly. There was just a lot of stuff going on. So my name was always thrown in stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, but in my mind, being a naive 21, 22 year old, I was like, they not trading with not nobody. Trade. Right, right, I'm right. Green, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I remember like my homies would send me the, the tweets. I'm like, why are you sending me that? Like, I ain't worried about this. Like, you think they gonna trade me? Like, ain't no way they trade me. And, uh, so like, you know, a little bit around the deadline, uh, there was like a rumor that the Sixers had turned down a deal for, for me that was gonna get them, or yeah, that I, they would've got, the Kings would've got Ben and I would've went to Philly. Uh, but I never thought anything of it. I still didn't think it was real, like no way. Mm -hmm. And like, even that day, uh, Aaron, my agent, always used to, y'all know Aaron. <laughs> Aaron always met, like he would mess with me a little bit about it, but like, we would just kind of laugh about it. And he called me that morning and was like, yo, I think you're about to get traded. And I'm like, yo fam, like, are you serious? We play Minnesota tonight. Like, stop yeah. playing. Like, I just want to, like, I'm eating breakfast right now, bro. Like, get off my phone. You know, Aaron, yeah, sometimes we're right. like, come on, bro, get off my phone. Uh, <laughs> he's like, no, nah, I'm for real. I'm like, no way. And then, like, all I could think, I, I called George Niang because he's in Philly. I was like, yo, fam, am I coming to Philly? Like, it might crack over there. Like, if I could actually get traded. Uh, and he's like, nah, I ain't heard nothing. So I'm like, all right, George ain't heard nothing because they would have asked him because right. Iowa State. Right. So I'm like, who could it be? In my head, I had no clue, like not even the slightest of idea who it could be. And then I remember I was on a call. We were on a call with Aaron, but I don't know how, and I swear by this story to this day. I don't know if they'll confirm it, but I promise you, like, Woj is the one who told me, like, I think it could be Indy. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yo, fam, how are you on the phone right now? Right. How do you know? You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, uh, and they're like, it's it's Indy. I'm like, Indy, like, for Zabonis? Like, that could be the only way. And then that's just how, how it went. But for yeah. me, it was definitely like, I just want to be a part of, like, building something. Mm -hmm. And the good part is that I got traded to Indy when they were in, like, a rebuilding stage and mm -hmm. trying to figure everything out. And I have been a major part in building that culture over there. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's worked out, like, you know, I, God don't make mistakes, so right. it's all worked. It's worked. And then itself. it helped too. You go in there with Buddy with you as well, for sure. So it was at least somebody that was you were familiar. Yeah, with. Yeah, it's like one of my best friends. So we mm -hmm. got to go together, and that's like that's worked out perfect. And I'm close to the crib, like right. Like it, instead I was gonna of say that too, you're yeah, not far from. It's like from four. Wisconsin. It's five hours from the crib, like yeah. whereas in Sac, like 
my homies got to call me like, yo, I'm trying to come to the sack next month. Right, right. right. Now <laughs> it's like, advanced. now my homies call me Thursday night, like, yo, I'm I'm trying to come to the game this week, and I'm like, yo, drive. I got a, I got, a, I got an extra bedroom. You know what yeah. I mean? They could just come. So that that's like a that's a that's a good aspect of it. Mm -hmm. MP, I kind of I have the same question for you, and I want to ask you this besides your injury, mm -hmm. because obviously that was a a big part of your career. That's going to be the easy answer. But was there any time in your career where you know, you felt like crying or breaking down. Like, was there ever another emotional moment in the NBA that the fans might not know about that you kind of went through as you've been, you know, going through your journey? Um, yeah. I mean, the first like emotional moment I had, and and he don't even know this. Uh, we traded Brandon Rush my second year. I think my second year. Either it was like, either it was the beginning of the second year or it was like mid at the trade deadline. We traded him. But it was, I was, I was, it was an emotional moment for me because that was like, Brandon Rush was like the brother, like big brother I never had. Right. Right. Always looked out for me. Like I was literally with him summertime, like during the season, always hanging with him. We travel places on the road. I'm always dinner, eating dinners and shit with him. Like I was, that was just my guy. And then, that was like the first experience of someone being traded around me. And so it was just like, damn, like shit happens like that. Like just that quick, he out of here. And so I don't, I wasn't necessarily crying, but I was like pretty hurt about it. I was pretty emotional about that moment. Um, just cause it was just like, that was, I, it was just so much time invested, you know, being around and hanging with him. And, you know, he was like really my dog. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, he, he ended up getting traded and it was just like, damn, it was a gut blow, like gut punch. But then it, it just, you know, it helped me, you know, further in my career of just understanding, like, all right, this yeah. is how this shit goes. We'll come with it, right? Yeah. And, like, motherfuckers get traded. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> facts. Motherfuckers get traded every day, B. <laughs> so he said to me, like, yo, Shaq got traded. What makes you think you want? I said, damn, that's a great fact. Like, right. like you probably right. Right. Yeah, yeah. That is crazy. From Orlando, like, how you give up Shaq? That's Just like that. Home. Shaq has been on how many teams? Every one? <laughs> Every team? <laughs> NBA Every history? Every team in the NBA now? <laughs> so we spoke a little bit about some of the new additions to your team, but I want to talk about some guys that are already there. And Ben Matherin put up some impressive scoring numbers uh, for a rookie, and he's a confident guy. But what's the best part about his game? I think you kind of alluded it. To it, what makes Ben so special is his confidence. Yeah. Like to say he's confident is like the biggest undersell I've ever heard in my life. Like he is <laughs> the most, like the most confident person I have ever met in my life. <laughs> like ever. <laughs> like he, in in his, like the, remember, you know, y'all know the whole quote about like LeBron gonna have to show me. Yeah. That's him. Like right. he's just like, he's like, He's just like that. That's just who he is. He he fully believes that. But that will make that's what makes that's him what so makes special. Him, yeah. You know what I mean? And like Ben is like he can be hard headed sometimes. You know what I mean? But I love that about him. Yeah. Like some people might not like that might make people mad. But I love that because for me and him, it's like I feel like I have enough like equity in our relationship that I can be like, yo, I'm not I'm not doing all this with you right now. Mm -hmm. Like this is what we got to do to win games, or this is what we got. You know what I mean? Like, and that's helped our relationship grow a ton because like. I think for Ben, it was like, in his mind, he's been going, he was going to the NBA his whole life. He knew that. Like, there was no question in his mind. So everything's kind of been a stepping stone to get into the NBA. You know what I mean? And so now that he's in the NBA, this is his first time he's going to be somewhere for a, you know, like hopefully a long time. You know what I mean? Like you're like, he played like a, like he was part of the, like the NBA stuff, like over like NBA and whatever like, they call that. Uh, NBA uh, Academy. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Part of NBA Academy. Okay. And then went to college. He was only there for two years. You know what I mean? So it was mm -hmm. all part of the process to get to the NBA. So for now with me and him, it's like, bro, I want to, whatever I got to do is like, let's grow our relationship. Cause we're going to be doing this together for a long time. Mm -hmm. So like, I just want us to be like, close and that way you can be transparent with me like I remember one of the first games he was mad at me because uh or, or he felt like he wasn't getting the ball enough mm -hmm. and like he didn't he wouldn't say it to me because he was like he didn't want to like ruffle any feathers right so I like go to his locker I'm like yo fam if you feel like you're not getting the rock enough just tell me yeah like I'm gonna I'm gonna get you the ball 
it, it, within reason. Right, like, right, right, right. You know what I mean? Like, I would never look you off, like, on purpose. Right. Like, that's not even right. me. And I just wanted to establish that. It's not like he thought that about me or anything. Mm -hmm. But, like, you know, when you come in as a rookie, it's hard to, like, confront people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's hard just in general in the NBA. So, mm -hmm. for me, it was like, for me and him, I just wanted to be on the same page. Like, that's our, our, our biggest thing is, uh, like, he's coming in as a – as a rookie, and I just want him to feel like, you know what, bro, like I, I, I see us being a part of, of this together for a long time. So mm -hmm. his best thing, no question, is his confidence. His confidence. Like you, I have so many stories that we can't get into on any podcast <laughs> ever. Uh, but man, Ben does so many things where you're like, yo fam, did you just say that? Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, to, like to dudes that like, there are certain dudes that you just don't, yeah. you're probably like, as a rookie, you're not saying that to, certain guys right, like, I don't right. want to get like <laughs> yeah. I don't want to give him any extra fuel like he's like like he don't care he yeah. just he want to attack everybody so we got to me about to him. me he's got that it to him though yeah yeah, yeah. Like, he's yeah. got that it about him and uh we had a segment I, I do a segment called rated PG you know and I highlight some of the young talent <clears throat> up and coming talent and I compared them to D Wade I feel like they got a similar game they've they've got that like strong guard attack mode finish at the rim big body um, and, and just, you know, aggressive scores, I, I feel like he fits in that mode. You being a, around him and watching him, you know, his game and, and, you know, him evolving as a player, who's one player you would have him sit down and watch? If he could watch tape, what player would that be? Oh, that's a great question. Wow. Um, I don't know. I think for Ben, it. I think it, it has to be – I'm kind of talking through the through the answer, but it has to be somebody who, like Ben, is so physically gifted at the same time. Like mm -hmm. he is dumb strong, mm -hmm. especially for, uh, you know, a rookie. And like he gets to the free throw line, like I've never seen a rookie do before. Mm -hmm. Like I remember in training camp, it used to be like going to the rim and like they wouldn't give him no calls. It's training camp. We're not calling that. Right. And you're a rookie. Like right. I used to be like, you yo, fam, you're not getting that call ever. And he'd be like. Yeah, all right, watch this. And then, like, first game, he got, like, 12 free throws. <laughs> like, I've been in the league three years, fam. I ain't never shot 12 free throws in a game. You know what I mean? But I think for him, it's got to be somebody who's, like, like such a downhill force but understands, like, that in-between game. And that's something that a lot of guys don't understand for a couple of years. Like, mm -hmm. you know, when you're young and, like, you're coming to NBA, especially now with analytics, it's, like, layups and threes. Three. You know what I mean? Yep. Like, I think he spent a lot of time – I've watched him work out a lot this summer of, like, kind of scoring in, in between there because I think some of the best scorers do. Uh, but for him, I think – he can be an elite elite level defender mm -hmm. like because he has all the tools to do it. You know what I mean? Like he's mm -hmm. strong enough. Like I think a lot of guys come in the league early, they get overwhelmed physically. Like they could be in the right spots, but they just can't. Like him, I'm not worried about that. Like he has he has the ability to do it for sure. And yeah. so like I think D-Wade is a good call on, on that, but it's got to be just like a, a, any aggressive two guard, mm -hmm. any aggressive two guard because like in his mind right now, he's like – Man, I only got a couple of years. I'm gonna be the best two guard in the league, and mm -hmm. that, and that's how it should be for yeah. any young guy. So, yeah. like, I appreciate that about him. Yeah, I love that. He he got a little PG uh, admiration in him. I remember saying that my my rookie year, and dudes was laughing at me. They was joking about yeah. it in the locker room. Dog, I'm gonna be an all star. Give me two, three years. <laughs> Whole locker room go. busting up laughing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, bet. Watch. Right. Sure enough, third year. All star. All star. So shout out, shout out Ben, shout out Ben for that. Well, I want to talk about your coach, the great, the legend, I say, uh, Rick Carlisle, one of the most, most beyond experienced coaches in the NBA. He done coached nothing but legends from Dirk, Jason Kidd, uh, uh, who I'm missing, uh, Reggie, Reggie, yeah, and everybody. even a young Luca. Now, I got to know this because you with him all the time. Mm -hmm. What is something that this man helped you from either telling you or your work experience to help you get to your star level that you at right now? I would say, man, two things that I think any coach could do for a player uh, is he, he's given me a ton of freedom. Carlisle is known to be a coach who, you know, calls a lot of sets, especially when he was in Dallas. Actually, when, when I got traded there, Rondo hit me and was like, I don't know if you're going to like him. Like, I don't know if that's going to be a good fit for you. Like, um, good luck. You know what I mean? That's basically what he said. I'm like, Rondo <laughs> right, telling me this. Right. Like, what a, damn, fuck. Uh, yeah, fuck. <laughs> here we go, right? But he let, man, like, he uh, he let me rock that whole year. It was like 20 games. Like, he let me do my thing. And then he met with me uh, before the season and was like, yo, um, like, I don't want to call plays anymore. I want you in charge of it. I believe in you. I trust you. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, word? I'm like, oh, I bet. Like, there was times during the year, like, I hit the game winner in Chicago. He over there, like, uh, run this. 
he like telling everybody, everybody looking at him. I like stepped in like, no, we're not running that. Yeah. Like, I got it. He's like, all right, go ahead. And, you know, I ended up working. Yeah. Uh, but he just believes in me and, and he gives me a ton of freedom. And I'd say the next part is honesty. He's always real with me, always keeps it real with me. Mm -hmm. Like uh, for you to lead this group the right way and be, do what you want to do, you're going to have to like just little things. Like you got to at least like if, if you're not going to be like an elite defender, you got to just be like even keel, like a put like you, like you can't be getting attacked out here. Like you mm -hmm. got to be better there. You know what I mean? Like, right, right. And, I, and I think that's needed because uh, I think there's like certain people in the league, they just can do what they want. You know what I mean? And I always like, I want to be coached the right way. And like, like you said, he's seen and been with some of the best players to ever play this game. You know what I mean? And so his honesty just is, is important for me because he's seen it all. You know what I mean? And mm -hmm. he understands like, he understands like when you're, when you're doing a lot of the offense, you're taking care of that. Like some guys like that's the like d defensive end, they, you know, take a little bit of a break. That's just like naturally how, how dudes are, you know what I mean? And sometimes I catch myself doing that and like, he's always on me, on my head about it. You know what I mean? And like, I think that's just kind of the back and forth that happens between us. And like, it's always real and it's always love. Like, yeah. Uh, funny story. He would never tell this story. We was in Dallas, and we was playing him on my birthday, and me and Luca just kept calling each other up into the ball screen. Like, like I, he called me up, I call him up. Yeah. I score, he score. Like, right, right. Carl, I call timeout. He looked at the, he did a slick too. He looked at the defense coach. He like, what are we gonna do? He just keep attacking Tyrese. <laughs> and, I, and I was like. I said, Coach, I'm attacking him too. Like, <laughs> you know, fuck that, right? Like, 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 they just he's like, me? whatever. Like, left the we got into the rest of the huddle, and he grabbed me aside. I was like, I didn't, I didn't mean to like put, you know, go at you in front. I'm like, Coach, it ain't. I'm yeah, not, you right. know what I mean? It is what it is. But <laughs> we have that relationship to where it's like we can just be real and authentic with each other, and I think that's a big part of it. Well, shout out to Rick Carlisle, aka Jim Carrey. <laughs> <Don't mind laughs> <only>. <laughs> but uh, speaking of Indiana, both of y'all there. Well, you played there and you play there, do y'all keep in contact with the legends that, that was there? Like, so, uh, for instance, Reggie Miller? Yeah, but the times we would see Reggie was when he would do, you know, TV analysis. You know, he'll come in and, you know, sometimes he'll come to the locker room, he'll chop it up, you know, and, and, and just embrace being there. Um, the only knock, I just wish, you know, especially me being, like, I feel like we had a lot of things in common. You know, uh, me being from SoCal as well, you know, me being a wing, the new wing there, right. like, I just, I thought, you know, when I when I went there, it was like, oh, cool, like, I'm gonna have this relationship, him teaching me shit, and, and him, you know, putting me under his wing. I I was, I was kind of salty, or not salty, but just wish that, you know, in that moment there, he would have embraced that situation of helping me get, you know, to another level and, and stuff like that. But he would come, and he would hang out, and, you know, he would talk, you know, with us from time to time, but you know, it was really, you know, when when we would have the, the TV games that he was, you know, working on. Uh, I don't, I mean, I don't know your situation. I, I, I have, we have a personal relationship. Uh, last year, they wanted me to, so they wanted me to call him or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, for what? But not, not, <laughs> not, because not for that reason. Yeah. Well, you got to like that no, for what? No, because like, the truth is like, I don't want to like bug nobody. You know what I right. mean? Like, that's, I, I'm not like, I don't want to like. What am, what am I gonna say? You know what I mean? Like sometimes I'm like, what am I? I don't know what to say in that in that anything. situation. You know, anything. anything. And that's the biggest thing that I'm it's that I learned is that, exactly like just having that connection to where like w like I want to reach out one day and like we're gonna where one day we have a chance to sit down. We're gonna talk. Yeah. Actual hoop where he can actually you know teach me things and stuff like right. that. But I wasn't like I didn't want to contact him. So like, I don't know what to say. You know what yeah. I mean? And um, we met throughout the uh, we met and uh, he's been cool. We text all the time. He texts me when we're playing well. Uh, mm -hmm. has yet to text me when I, we're not playing well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Hilarious. sure I'll get that text soon, but we've kind of been able to go our relationship and that's been nice. Uh, my biggest, I, I've said this since I went to India and I've been very vocal about it. It's like, uh, like when people ask like, like indie legends, like who I talk to is P. Like I talk, like we <laughs> yeah. talk all the time. You know what I mean? Like he said, like when I got there, the teammate have no barber. I'm like, Yo, P, yeah, where the barber at? You know what I mean? Like, he sent me the barber. Like, and everybody's like, where bro been at? I'm like, you know, I walked in the locker room. I said, yo, we need a barber. You know, like, they like, I go, it's number, bro. I said, y'all don't want him to cut y'all? What y'all mean? Like, I don't want him to cut me, man. Like, who you, I'm tell, P? Who you tell him? Who that? Martel? Martel? Yeah, Martel, yeah. He'll cut me. Uh, yeah, I got, I got a flyer press conference. Martel, this week. nice, too. Yeah, he nice. Yeah, got yeah, a flyer press conference. He'll cut me in the morning. And he like, from, and he, he from Indy. Indy right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I talk, I mean, me and Pete talk all the time. And uh, 
you know, the, I think uh, some fans are still obviously a little salty about it, but I mean, that's just like, we've had a relationship since mm -hmm. I came to the league. So mm -hmm. that's just my, my biggest thing is like Reggie and him. That's all I talk to from there. Mm -hmm. There's no shade. I don't, I don't want it to get mis, misconstrued or, or nothing like that about me, the relationship with Reggie. No, I understand he's busy. Like he has right. shit going on, but just at the time, that was my feeling at the time, like, you know, getting drafted there, like, oh shit, like Reggie played here. We got kind of similar, you know, backgrounds. Now being here, like, you know, I, I just thought, you know, and, it, and at the time it would be a lot of guys, you know, like, um, you know, all the old guys would come back and, right. you know, be a part of the team at some point. But I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, at some point I'm, I'm, I'm gonna learn some shit from Reggie. For sure. Um, but I get it, you know, hindsight, Fast forward like now and understanding the game a lot more and, and how busy life is and like I, I get it now. But yeah, I was I was a little hurt. I was a little hurt by it. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, Reggie. Next time, <laughs> be more Reggie Miller. Shit. Be more Reggie Miller. <laughs> be, more, be more Reggie Miller and give advice to the young kids. Yeah. But no, we've we been tapped in. Yeah, yeah for we, sure. We've been tapped in. Yeah, yeah, I still got a screenshot, first text. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> first text. You know, when you first get the NBA, like dudes texting you, I'm like, no way. Like, you text me, D Wade text me, and Woj, and I talked to Woj on the phone. I got all them conversations in my camera <laughs> roll right now. Because at the time, it was like, where I'm from, that, that's not supposed to happen. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, right. they all, like, I texted back for everybody. Like, I, I swear, if you go on my girl's phone right now, you can go find her camera roll. The first, I talked to Woj, like, I put it on speaker, like, yo. They need to hear this one. <laughs> we go. We go. Keep this in the vault for a minute. <laughs> he gonna bring some. He gonna have a podcast later on and put all this shit out. Watch yeah, one day. One day. <laughs> oh, you got a relationship with Larry? Yeah, 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 yeah. I met Larry this year because he's a consultant now. So I. Oh, so this is your first time meeting. Yeah, meeting Larry was this year. And they year. posted it, and I was like, you know, you go to the gym in the morning, and I just throw on a hoodie, shorts, and my flip flops. Yeah. My toes was out. They put it on Instagram. It's crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> meet Larry Bird. My toes out. That's yeah. nuts. Uh, <laughs> Larry I'm like, Bird, why y'all post? This, like he that. met him with his dick out, so. <laughs> Whoa! Damn! Damn. Damn bro. All right, that's that it. was wild. That's it. Uh, okay, yeah. that, was, that was too much. Damn! Wow. That's how we that do it. That was crazy. Edit that one. Yeah. yeah. Man. <laughs> you could have used another word, Pete. That was crazy. You could have used word. He did. So yeah. he, met him, he met him pissing so in a stall. Word. Yeah. So yeah, technically, I, I, he met him with his dick out. Yeah, but that was a crazy <laughs> sentence. Like, I didn't know where we were going with that I one. Yeah. I, I knew, but I didn't want to go. Jeez, yeah. I was like, saying yeah. where I was at. He, he was like, huh? Yeah. What are you talking about? That was the biggest thing. It was a good story, bro. Yeah. I could have eased, out. I eased ball, into though. that one a little bit. You said it like mean, too. <laughs> it was aggressive. It was hella aggressive. Like, like, dick out. Yeah. Like, I was wild. Uh, I could have I could have eased into that one. That was the biggest pause of all the pause. Hella aggressive. That was, that was, it wasn't me, shit. You, he you told the story. Well, but you said it though. Today. What was your relationship with Larry like? We had a we had a tight relationship. He's in Larry. front office though when you were there, right? Yeah, he was yeah, in front so. office. So like I would, you know, I would go up there and chop it up with him like quarterly throughout the season. You know, we'll have our talks. Like I was I was real tight with Larry. You know, we we had a great relationship. We would talk about fishing, we'd talk about the team, we'll talk about just basketball in general. Um he was he was like, you know, it, that was that was top dog over there. Yeah. But uh, Crazy Larry's story, um, and this shit always sticks out to me. I remember we, like we was, it was after practice, right? And we were shooting around and he's walking out. I've never like, I, at, to this point, I've never seen him play. Like I've never seen him shoot, never seen him like, you know, none of that. I always had this vision of him from, you know, YouTube videos okay. and old clips like that. So we're shooting and he's like walking out of the gym about to leave, but the ball rolls old to, over to him. And I'm sure he probably haven't shot the ball in like fucking, I don't know, years at this point. So he picks the ball up, bro. Shoots that motherfucker cash from three, two. Like, and he's in slacks. He's in a, you know, button down. Hey. He got his loafers on. One shot, like, and it, it's just crazy the story of like him. It, like, he could have fucked that up and airballed or like, right. and then I would have just had this whole d different like mindset about who he was. Right. Like, this motherfucker was not like that. Yeah. Did he say anything to you after he made nah, it? No, bro. Like, he cashed that shit and then just smooth walked out, bro. <laughs> like, and, I, and that was it. But I was just like, I'm, I'm big on moments. And to me, that was just like, he, like I said, he could have fucked that up. Like, that shit could have just been a wild shot. Like, it's the airball. That was the, the coolest story you. Cashed that motherfucker, bro, and just walked out. Like, didn't say shit. Just walked out of the gym. I am who I am. I am who I am. I'm the bird, <laughs> motherfucker. I am who I am. <laughs> I told you. <laughs> it was, yeah, but that, that was one of my, uh, like, that's my all-time, one of my all-time favorite stories of Larry. 
But we, but Larry was tight. I was tight with Larry. Yeah. So last season, uh, Tyrese, I kind of want to touch on some stats. And even when I read this, I kind of was like, wait, well, that's a very impressive stat. So you were second in assists. And then you were the first player in the in NBA history to record 40 assists and no turnovers in a three-game stretch. Damn. So first of all, you need to talk to him a little bit. I'm just going to throw that out there. <laughs> but as a point guard, I want to know, like, what stat are you keeping in mind, like, the most throughout the game? Or is there one? Like, are you more proud of one stat than another being the point guard? Uh, Not really. I mean... I I mean, I hate when I have turnovers. Like, I, I kind of, like, you know, certain dudes stress on certain things. Like, I missed this many shots. I did this. Like, I hate going to the table and seeing that I had, like, three, four turnovers. I'd be like, damn, that's mm -hmm. that's a bad night. You know what I mean? Like, because uh, I just you know, taking care of the ball has always been, like, it's always been stressing me since I was a kid how important that is. So, mm -hmm. uh, but during games, I try not to focus on stuff like that. Uh, like I just be want to know like foul count and stuff like that. That's like, like th those little intricacies, like they don't talk about enough, but all the dudes that everybody's like that dude's a genius or he's really smart. They all know that shit. Like, like, uh, Rico Hines was with me and he, he always used to say like, you need to know everything that going on. You know how many fouls he have. You need to know what the popcorn man doing in the concourse. You need to know, uh, how many points this person have. Like you need to know all this stuff. Cause you need to know what's going on through the flow of the game. How many shots this dude got tonight? Yeah. Cause if he don't got enough, you got to give him the rock so he can get more. And, uh, like, that's why I always like, every time I come to the, to the bench, I always ask for a score, like a, a stat sheet. Like, I just want to see, I try to look at as many things possible, how many timeouts we have left, just little things like that, just trying to know, because I feel like that just gives you just a little bit more to know what's going on during the game. That's 40 assists and zero. That's a crazy stretch, bro. And one of those was was against, against us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the middle, I think the second, the second first, game. The first of the game in the back, the first game in the back to back. Yeah, the first, it was y'all. And then the Lakers, and then okay, so we started the the streak. It might have started the game before y'all. Okay, yeah, because I think I remember it was like we was in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that was the game. Zoo went crazy. Zoo was down there thirty and thirty. <laughs> yeah, that game was. Cr I'm like, what? But I remember, and I I didn't play that game, so I was on the sideline. But I remember just watching that game, and and that's when I like I saw like ah, oh, this motherfucker is a pure point guard like. The shots that you was just creating, like the shit you was setting up, like you, everybody was was just like, just in in our defense. Like I, I think we have one of the better defense. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, you was just breaking shit down. You was getting to where you wanted to. You was finding people. Like you just made the game so much easy, and it was a beauty to watch. I'm not gonna lie. I was watching like, damn, this. He yeah, he liked that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this motherfucker is nice. Like everybody was just getting wide open looks. And I don't, I don't know if, like, it was just a slower scoring night for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was trash that game. Yeah, nah, you wasn't trash. <laughs> but like, offensive, like, scoring-wise, you struggled a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But it, like, when you watch certain guys and it's like, damn, he's just having an off, or, like, he's just off tonight. Yeah, yeah, right. I didn't, it wasn't like you were off. It was just like, I mean, your shots weren't falling, but, like, it was still like you had full control of that game. For sure. You know what I mean? And some people, they can't, like, if they're not making shots, then there's no value to them, yeah. you know? But you, you just it, it, it was just like you was just orchestrating shit, and yeah. if it, it it took us to get a thirty and thirty yeah, uh, that night for us to win, <laughs> game. I'm like, what is going on? Yeah, that's that's crazy. We talked, uh, we had Draymond and, and Demar here, right? And uh, you know, they they were talking about you know how the young guys are learning how to be pro. Um, you're a leader, and you're pioneering this new school of players. Give me, give me, what's your take on how like you approach the game and, you know, let us know and let us get us an insight of how you're separating and how you're leading that new group of guys um, on, on approaching the game as a professional now. Yeah, I would say something y'all talked about in that conversation was about like how important vets are. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like that is like, that's so undervalued in the NBA, which is crazy to say, mm -hmm. but like my vets, when I got to the league, Harrison Barnes and Corey Joseph, who I'm still super close <clears throat> to both of those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this last year, honestly, my vet, I mean, my vet this year and all my young guy, all the young guys was James Johnson. We had James this year. That's right. uh, and George Hill got traded to us in the middle of the year as well. My dog. So, like, for me, it's just like having those guys with – different insight and listening to their like history in the NBA. Like I always appreciate that because I like they can say certain things. And I'm like, damn, I remember 
watching that. You know what I mean? Like I remember watching those those games. Like Harrison always talked to me and, you know, tell me stories about Steph and that Warriors team. Like I was like, I remember watching that come up. You know what I'm saying? And like G Hill always talks about like when when you guys were going in like early 2010s and like how the way you guys defended certain ways. And like, he's like, the like he was with me, teach me like his little like, uh, intricacies like of ball screen defense and just stuff like that. Like I always appreciate stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And like uh, people always tell me like, you know, like you're, you know, wise beyond your years or, you know, whatever. I think it just comes from obviously the way I was raised, but a lot to do with the vets that I've had. I've just had some really mature guys and guys who are great teachers. Like, and I'm just, I think our relationship has helped a lot of that. Like mm -hmm. Corey Joe getting married at the end of the month, I'm going to a wedding. Like Harrison was like, I had a party for my extension. Like, and, uh, Jade, my girl, invited everybody, and like Harrison got there. Harrison showed, showed up. up. You know okay. what I mean? And like that and meant dope. a lot to me because he helped. I feel like you know instill certain ways that I approach things, like mm -hmm. how early I get to the gym and how late I stay at the gym, how much I'm taking care of my body. All that stuff is so undervalued in like what what we talk about. Because when you're young, coming to the NBA, like it's everything is thrown at you at once. Right. You're getting everything, and right. like. Uh, like to the fans, you're like fans. You're like you're like the new toy. You know what I mean? Right. So like they like they're just gonna show you dumb love. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And so mm -hmm. like it's hard not to get caught up in that. I think for certain guys, and for me, I just I feel like I had great teachers, and that helped a lot. And so. Mm -hmm. Like knowing what I knew, like, cause I had those guys, I left out Tristan Thompson was obviously a great vet for me as well, a championship guy. Like, mm -hmm. so like when I got traded to Indy, it was like, man, like, I don't, I didn't really have like any, any, there weren't really like any vets there if I, if I'm remembering correctly, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. if you considered like Miles, Miles, Miles right. a vet or TJ right. a vet, you know what I mean? But I kind of got to help build that culture, like from the jump, like from the moment I got there and it was kind of taking the things that I knew and being like, I hated the way that this worked in SAC or I hated the way guys approached it this way. Like I just, we're going to get rid of that completely. Like it's just not going to happen while we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's important. Was it a routine that you picked up that you brought to Indiana because- at that point, you guys never played in the playoffs. You guys, you know, were underperforming. Or not, I wouldn't even say underperforming, but like you didn't go into a situation where a team had a culture of winning already. Um, so then now you, you got to find new routines, like figure out what works for you. Was that an easy process going from, you know, just getting drafted, now you're playing in Sacramento, not a winning culture, putting your imprint into the game, how you prepare, how you get ready, and then now being a starter, handed the keys, go to Indiana. Like, did you develop a, a routine that started in Sacramento or is it now shifted since you've been in Indiana? I feel like it kind of changes. I think it had to, though, because due to like the militant style you talk about with Indy, you know what I mean? Like the way like I used to always go early in sack and like set up my treatment time so that I could work out and get back on the table before practice started. You know what I mean? And like, mm -hmm. but in Indy, you don't really get that. I, you don't really get to do that because right. like treatments at a certain time right. and lifting's at a certain time. So now I got to figure out, all right, this is how hard I'm going to work. Like I'm going to call them. I'll call Carl in the morning and be like, yo, I need you to push my, my, my treatment back like an hour so I could get treatment. Then I could get on the court, do my stuff, then get in the weight room. Then I go back to the court. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's kind of just like figuring it out, like that right balance. I think there are certain guys in the league who they know, like no matter where they are, they're going to do the same thing. Like right. big thing Harrison used to do, he used to get up at like, he'd be in the gym like six in the morning. Like every day, I knew Harrison would be there at six a.m. Like, and he do that in the summers too. Yeah. Like he always there early. Like for me, I was like, I ain't getting up at six in the morning, but right. I'll be there about. I get there about seven. Right. You know what I mean? Like right. six is OD. Six like, is OD. If I look up on an alarm clock and, and I see a five, that's like OD. Yeah, and I don't get it. Like people give you yeah. shit. Like oh, I've been doing this shit since five, six in the morning. Like all right, I'm doing the same work yeah, you're yeah, doing. Yeah, I'm right, just right, doing right. at a different but time. But I understand like, certain guys got stuff. You know what I mean? Like I'm 23, so I ain't like. I'm I'm going home to yeah. like get on the game. You yeah. know what I mean? Like Harrison got yeah, yeah. a daughter. You know what I mean? People right. got kids and stuff. So I get that. Like they don't want to be at the gym all day. They want right. to get done with practice and go and you know go about their day. So for me, it's just like my I think my routine changes on like you know on game days and certain things like that. I would say the one thing that I took, I always take the first bus. No matter what, like okay. no matter what change. Because when you're a rookie, you know, you like that first training, right. that you first take that court first time, bus. you have to be, I have no choice. But that's something I think Harrison instilled, instilled in me more than anything. He always took the first bus, no matter what. Even if he wasn't playing, he's on the first bus. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn. That's one thing like I appreciate from Russ, dog. Russ is always on the first bus. Yeah. Russ is, and it, it, to me, it's just like, I don't like getting to the gym and just waiting around sitting like, you know, it's such so much time uh, that goes right. by and you just sitting there. But like Russ takes that first bus and he's there from 
I don't know, 4.30, game is at 7, 7. Like, he's there for, like, three hours before right. tip-off. And it's just like, damn. Like, Russ, man. I don't, like, what do you what do? You do? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's only so no, much for sure. getting you, ready, you can you get ready. You just figure it out. Sometimes, bro, I just, I don't even know. Like, I'm like, dog, I got to take the first bus. And then I be there, I get my treatment in, get my lift in, and now I got, like, 20 minutes before I'm on the court. Yeah. I might just sit on my phone or something. <laughs> I, don't even got, like, yeah. I ain't got nothing to do. I'm just figuring it out. But yeah, I was like, like, Harrison, get there first bus. Yeah, I'm going to get there first yeah. bus. Okay. I knew it was crazy when I was at home watching, like, and, you know, they'll put up his workout, him getting ready on Instagram. That's when I knew it was crazy. Like, I'm at home watching his, oh, his workout. <laughs> yeah, he just getting off the court finishing it. And I'm, like, at home watching this watching shit. Watching this like, shit. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. On the topic of learning and improving, since we own that, uh, I want to take you to the 2K world for a minute. You see, since we all play 2K over here. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what what's a badge or a skill that you plan on working on in your bag this year? Oh, that's a great question. I feel like I got, I don't even, I, I ain't even checked my badges on there in a little bit. I got, <laughs> if I don't have every playmaking badge. Uh, the, the triple threat combo. That's what he did. He, he got to work on his triple threat. Yeah, yeah, that's a fact. Because I'll never be in that situation. I always dribble it up the court. Strength badge. Uh, yeah. Uh, bruiser. <laughs> yeah, there you uh, go. Uh, <laughs> but I feel like, ah, oh, damn, that's a good question. I don't know. I would say, was it, they got like a like a perimeter like pick and roll defender type thing. I just want bronze. Yeah, I'm trying to get it to bronze. What is it? The pick yeah. pick dodger? Or? Yeah, pick dodger. Yeah, 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 yeah. bronze. It's always every again. Yeah, I'm like, damn, I'm getting. You know, you just get hit by every screen. I'm like, man, this shit. Yeah, it start to hurt over the so course of the day. Make, yeah. We gotta make sure, uh, uh, Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie, Ronnie, hook listen. you up. Get you your bronze this year. Yeah, give me the. Give, gotta, it's just it. like the NBA is not designed now. Cause and it's good that you got G Hill because G Hill was like one of the best at getting through screens. Yeah, he be doing it in practice still. I'd be like, man, yeah. Fuck. But you couldn't like we we and that was a, a whole different era of basketball where you can get into the ball handler, like yeah. you can push into him, like you could literally fight your way over screens back then. Now, like you do that and somebody dive, take a dive and and throw the ball in the air, three shots. All like, I gotta do is, as soon as you put your hand, you just yeah, or they just throw it, wrap right through there. Like you can't do it no more. Dog, but but before, do that, I'd be so mad when they don't shoot it. You know, when they just yeah. get the foul and drop the ball. Yeah. I'm like, oh, bro. <laughs> CP does that all the time. When he get the low rip, he just rip and just yeah. drop the ball. And drop the ball and walk he know right what out of doing. bounds. Yeah. He know what he's doing, he's being an asshole, but he'd be like, <laughs> I'd be like, oh, no way. I'd be so hot. No, I walk right to the free throw line, cause he knows he know he's gonna get the two free throws. I'm like, nah, no way. I heard that y'all was in a Madden League. We yeah, was. was. I got invited tell to me, the Madden tell League. Tell me a little bit about How this many Madden League. That year? One. One and done. He made it to the Super Bowl. It was during, it was during COVID. That's right. I got I got put in this league. Aaron, we got the same agent, was like, Aaron yo, y'all in it, right? Yeah, Aaron's Aaron in the league. He's like, yo, it. you got to be in this league. So I'm like, all right, bet. Like, I don't even play Madden like that, but like, I'll jump in, right? Yeah. And so... Uh, I got in the league and I wasn't understanding what was really going on at first because like you, we do the draft and like he be cheating, bro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he draft, he draft like big. We time. know, we know. He like going. Tyreek Hill with the first pick. He gonna draft the fastest receivers and like the fastest players in the game, and then he gonna get a young quarterback that got quick development. He had Jordan Love, yeah. Tyreek Hill, Speed uh, all all fast dudes. And I'm and I'm like he didn't he wasn't losing. Can I ask you a question? If you was playing. In an NBA 2K league. Yeah. And we do, we, we release Please all the Please ask this. Please answer this. Can I, can I, can yeah. I ask Go ahead. Can I ask Go ahead. Can Go ahead. Because I, Go ahead. Can I know where you're going can with I ask this. It. If we play in a 2K <laughs> league, <laughs> right. right? And we release all the players and we do a fresh draft. We pick the team. You can be on the Lakers, whatever. Okay. <laughs> in this league, all the players are free to pick. We can't pick him. Is that, that's fair. I'm rolling with that. Oh, Come it's on. Not. No, How it's is not. that? Why, like, How? Yo, listen, 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 listen. Cause I'm not so like I grew up. We did random. Y'all do like when y'all play each other. You three randoms, right? He yeah. loves it. Yeah, that's yeah. how we grew up. That's how we play. But, but we can't random and get him. But no, no more do I do that. If you come <laughs> to my house, you like you want to play two K? I'd be like, all right. I go right to the Pacers. They'd be like, what's going on? I'm like, hey, you got to work this hard to not be the Pacers. You know, like, you know what's I'm crazy? Being me. But you, you every day. You know what's crazy? <laughs> you know why the random rule started? Is <laughs> because that's who all I used to pick. I used to pick like. The, back then, the Pacers. Yeah. And I used to kill everybody. And oh, you can't play with nobody else like that. All right, bet. We'll random. 
So that's where I random started because I was picking myself every time and oh, I was dope. busting their ass. Pacers on 2K, that was my 2K team. Yeah. I used to go crazy. Because D West, I had to sub D West out. Yeah, even though more I, shooting. Yeah, D West can't. You know, like 2K, guys, like guys <laughs> like that can't be nice on 2K. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You didn't, why? I asked you the wrong question. Y'all can't you help me out. <laughs> you didn't help me out for nothing. They get mad at me and I tell them, like, Bro, oh, what if pick him. what he if I get the first LeBron. what if I get the first pick and I pick myself? Like I'm doing y'all a service. But you don't I'll never get the first I'll pick. I'll tell you why it's not fair because sometimes you, like players will drop and it's like the next best option. Like clearly, Is, you would rather have him. You know what I right, mean? Right. I hear and you. So sometimes it can be a little. But again, I mean, well, I get what you guys are getting at. But no, it doesn't matter. Anyway, yeah, I'm so. not. I'm Check not playing in the league Kyrie's where I'm shit. not. I can't. I <laughs> where can't I'm not fuck. myself. The only thing that'd be fuck. crazy if he if now if he let his dude slide to like the third round or something, then I'd be rolling. But I'm not rolling with y'all talking about. Y'all no, I'm, I'm grabbing that. myself. Dude, First, whenever pick. my pick is, and again, I sometimes we we've had a uh, we've done a league where I'm like the fifth pick, and there's like still I don't know. The top, like LeBron, LeBron LeBron's probably just off the board, but like to pick him, just to say I had him. No, make him I'm not mad, playing in that league. Even do I don't, that. I'm kind of won't even let you play in the league if you do that. I'm, I'm, not that that I'm rolling with that. So back to the Madden story, man. So I, I, I was beating like every computer. Like I, I grew up playing computer all the time. So I kill every computer. <laughs> when I play people, and you know, I'm 500 when I play right, right, users. Right. So I'll end up in the wild card game. But I was like the higher seed wild card game. I won the wild card game. I'm like, damn, I. Right. Then I won the next game. I'm like, oh, word. So I'm in the, now, aren't you in the, you're in the conference, the, what's that called? Yeah, conference final. He has an AFC championship. Yeah. So I don't remember who I was playing, but they quit. Spokes player. Who? His, 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 his was username was Spokes player. Smokes or Spokes? Spokes. Who was Spokes player? Spokes player. I don't we know had, we had, we had, we had some like random people in there. It might I got it. I got it. The, I got the whole playoff run recorded yeah. on my PC right okay. now. We know so you, I can okay. send you all the clips right now. Okay. Right. So I get to the Super Bowl. <laughs> And they like, and I'm playing P. I'm like, damn, I'm <laughs> right? So I'm like, all right, I'm just gonna stay with what I got going. At the time, I'm not a real Madden head. Like, I just I would like go on YouTube and find like the five like plays that work every time. Oh, that's this guy. And I'm running between those five plays. Next thing I know, I'm down like 40. <laughs> but I'm like, but in my head, bro, I wanted to quit so bad because I'm the type of dude like, I'm not about to, I'm not about to get mad. I'm about to quit. Like, you won, it's done. Yeah. Right? But like. If I'm being, if I'm keeping it a buck with y'all, it's like I had, I'm not in the NBA yet, so I don't want Pete to think I'm like a bitch or something. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm not quitting. No, I'm not quitting. We gonna, we gonna play this game out. And I got cooked. I deleted the footage right away. You cannot find that Wait, game. Wait, how much did he beat you by? Because you gotta take a picture. <laughs> I you take a picture? No, I probably nah, it was because it was in the yeah. league. You don't gotta take a picture. You don't gotta take the picture. I lost by like forty, maybe yeah, it fifty. Was, it was it was probably like fifty. Yeah, it was Damn. bad. But like everybody talking to him, like I you. You're yeah. not even in the. I'm in the Super Bowl. Yeah, you went to the Super Bowl. Yeah, and, like, and, and you was new to it. So like you got there, there's a ton of value. And You're then new the next day, y'all like we doing the off season, and yeah. I was like, "Good luck, I'm done, I'm out." And I left. <laughs> I knew I want to make the Super Bowl again. I'm like, I'm out of here. Ain't been back. That's since. this guy right here. This is the I, YouTube king. I take king. my stop. First of all, stop. I am not the YouTube. You're the king. YouTube. You are king. the YouTube king. Dog, he'll literally be like, "Ah, oh, fuck this game. Like, I'm just not good. Like, like he'll be over it." Two days later, like I'm back. I'm the no, no, best. No, 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 like no, I'm, I'm me. nice. Like bro, how you just get good all of a sudden? The, what he's really good at is being a GM. Like actually, like playing the game. I'm just as talented. No, but you're it's not. the GMing <laughs> with drafting and things like that. So I take a break, and then I do like to come in for fellowship, and I typically beat. <laughs> 95% of the league and then when I play him I just know like okay my team's not as good as his and you're not as good at, at the game as well me. I beat you in the 2k league so I mean we're that's, talking about I would Madden. join that we're talking about Matt. So we could do that that's okay. the thing I would jump they in. don't like doing the 2k league no we more. do a 2k league hey. it just uh it, it, it goes like two seasons yeah and then you guys have how many games? We play what twenty nine. Play everybody once. Not a whole lot. Yeah, play yeah, everybody once and then we'll get to the play season. We're not. I mean, I be trying to do that with my homies, but. It always falls apart. Yeah, yeah. Like game ten. Right. When they lose in the Hall of Fame quick. computer, yeah. and I'm, I'm like, I can't help y'all. Like, I'm sorry. It always dies fast with us. Madden League will go like five, six seasons. But you guys do a good job of like, you guys have good like, y'all will text me like, yo, you ain't played your game. If you don't play that game by today, the group you get that advanced. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, damn. Like, <laughs> like the play is wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, y'all. Like, I couldn't be. I couldn't be the league uh, commissioner. Yeah, I, I could be a member. Yeah. I could be on the board. I can't be the commissioner. <laughs> Was that always A1 in you? Me and A1, yeah. A1 I be A1. 
You beat A1. Because A1, A1 was on the other side. A1 was on the AFC. I beat A1. You beat A1. I beat Aaron, A1, and this dude named Spokes Player. Spokes Player. Yeah, Aaron is. I think that's. Um, uh, he like did something with Madden. Like, he yeah. worked for EA or something. Why am I like that? This is, yeah, uh, that's my dog, too. I, know, I think you I, know who I'm yeah, talking about. Yeah. Fuck. I don't know why I'm drawing blanks on his name. I can't think of it. You know him, Karan. Oh, that's who. That's who that yeah, is. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's who that is. Too, like, yeah. Se- yeah, he second quarter too. That's Karan. Like, that's when I was like, so oh, I'm the man. Like, I'm about to get to the Super Bowl. I'm gonna keep it close. Karan ain't yeah. good. It's my 50. He got lucky being here. Go ahead, Dallas. So it's time for another edition of Starting Fives. But since you're one of the best passers in the game today, I want to do Starting Five passers that you've played with. So we're not doing like red right with or like in the NBA at the same time. In the NBA at the Word, same okay, time. Okay, okay. So and P gets to do the same. So we're gonna give you the first pick. So who do you have at point guard? <laughs> <How are you? laughs> Myself, of course. Go on. Okay. Yeah, me. Okay, you at point. Self-explanatory. Okay, at, at point, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Luca. Damn, I think that's what I was taking my two. I like that. that was your two. I'm, I'm gonna take Luca at the one, and 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 for obvious reasons. Like Luca sees shit that's just like. <laughs> Bro, how? <laughs> how? He did some shit where, like, when he do the shoot and then pass behind, that, that is the yeah, coldest awesome. shit to me. Yeah. Mm. Now he threw that pass Tricky. against us on the baseline when he was trapped and he jumped and he, like, whipped it. Yeah. And it, it, it like, the ball, it, like, bent. Oh, that was against you? And I was behind him. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a boomer. And he yeah, threaded like, that shit on the baseline. Happened? Yeah, yeah. Huh? You was behind him, you said? I was been playing, so I was sitting there like this. It's like, good chap, good chap. He so you threw had the it. perfect angle. He threw it, and he pass. turned around and looked at me. I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said, nah, that was special. They showed that I clip. Said, it, I said, yo, you are special. That yeah. was crazy. He, he got some passes, bro, where his, it's just like, bro, your IQ is, is crazy. <laughs> he said, look at His Daddy. IQ for the game is crazy. So that's my point. Two guard. Shooting guard. Okay, well then I'm, okay. He took Luca, so it kind of messed with yeah. my lineup. So I'm going to yeah. bump myself to the two, and then I'm going to put Rondo at the one. Okay. Because I was always like, dog, it's, the pass he used to make, I used to be like, yo. Like, him and CP are two guys that I'm like, that I always just was like, they're geniuses. Like, yeah. They always know where everybody is. So I, I'd probably say Rondo at the one. Rondo at the two. My two, I'm going to go JH. I'm going to go James Harden. Him being a two guard, but having that point guard feel, finding people. You know, he, you know, had that lob threat shit going. And then from that, he just find everybody that spaced around the court. He he was a problem for for a great stretch in Houston, bro. It yeah, was yeah, yeah. like, bro, how still, you match up with He still is now. He still but is in now. Houston, bro, it was tough because he had Capella rolling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you didn't know if you had to pull in or like spray out. Like it was it was just it was tough. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he'll give you fifty at the same time. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we played my rookie year when he was still in Houston, but he didn't want to be in Houston. Everybody oh, okay. knew he didn't want to yeah, be in yeah, Houston. Yeah. He so had he like just thirty, like it. walk to thirty. I was like, this is special. <laughs> uh, I'm at three. I'm gonna take Braun. I think like mm. I have, you gotta take. I mean, he's like a passer. he is a point yeah. really. Mm-hmm. That that he he prefers to be right. a passer over everything. So right. probably Braun. Uh, fuck it. I'm gonna go me. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's when you hit that. That's when you hit that ant. Like that's when you hit that ant. Like coach, I don't do that. <laughs> hey, I played. I played a little point the last two seasons. Now you know. I'm, I'm gonna go me. Mm, that's tough. I'm trying to think. I probably would take. I probably would take Draymond. That's crazy. It was in my head. Yeah. I, was like, I think Draymond, just because he's Dray- like the quarterback of that that's system over there. You know what I mean? IQ. Draymond was my. That was that was my pick. Fuck. That's perfect. crazy. It has to be Draymond, right? Uh, yeah. You I'm trying to think who even who else is at the four that passes like that. I got. I got. I got one. I'm gonna go Giannis. Giannis, his size, being Giannis able to. Had it? Yeah, Giannis is a hell of a passer. <laughs> So you know, I say sometimes he do be doing stuff where like you know he's he, he a euro step dunk on four. I, I just next like time you throw four people in there, you go to dunk it. He just I just, I just never. I just don't like I don't I don't like his no look. That's the only thing I don't like. <laughs> his no look, he be like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I be hit that. I'm like, like, Yo, I was I was special at that right there. Got the, got the. <laughs> but but yeah, gotta see like. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he passed it right till you did look away. <laughs> What is that? But, but no, nah, Giannis is a hell of a passer, bro. Hell of a passer. I, I, I'm going Giannis. You don't have to make me look at him more now because I, I never seen I mean, he passer. averages like five, six yeah, Duncan. assists a game. Duncan. No, but like he he always drives and everybody collapses. Yeah. And then after he dunked it three times, then he'll just <laughs> go up and somewhere there. Like an easy <laughs> yeah. pass. Yeah. Yeah. I never see it. 
Who you got? <laughs> we're at the five. Five. Now? Yeah, number yeah. five. I mean, come on, Jokic, of course. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. And I, I think know. there's. Yeah. I have to know who you're picking at the five if it's not Jokic as a passer. Oh, this is gonna be interesting. This is interesting. Um, I really think there's only one option. I mean, not uh, there's a lot of options, yeah, but there's a lot of options. I want to hear it if he don't say it. I, 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 I'm no, wondering if we're on the same I played with some, uh, like I played with like against older dudes that was like hell of a passer. Give us one spot. P. Give it. Fuck it. I'm, 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 a, Take I'm, your a go, time. I'm a go Sabonis. I'm a go yeah, Sabonis. yeah. That's yeah, what it has I'm to be, right? Sabonis. What are you thinking? Because he's a triple double. Mm. I was gonna say Powell. You could go Powell or Mark. Both of them. Yeah, are that's fair. I would not have thought of that, but I was just thinking current NBA. Yeah, it would have to be Domas. See, I'm old though. I played against those. I played against those dudes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My my list is a little longer than your list. Yeah, that's fair. Senior citizen. Trying to think. Yeah, it has to be Domas. Yeah, don't because yeah, he's triple double. That's what you was gonna say. As, for, it, yeah, it had to, yeah, yeah, had to be that pick. There we go. That's, that's it. Cool. We did that's it. A good man, five. That's a good five right I like there. Tough one. <laughs> I think I got you though. I think I got you. You tried to cheat, people. I went too small because I I went too small and took Rondo. That's the problem. It's about passing though. So yeah, I think yeah, that's yeah, the goal of it. Yeah, Rondo, it is. Just my Let personal my, opinion. I'm surprised y'all didn't put Lamelo <laughs> or Lonzo in there. You know I got to talk about my ball brothers. It's all time, like or not all time, but that we played against. The they are elite. They are elite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. when it's all show. said and done, for sure. I think he's going to be up there on that say. list. Well, that is it. Hey, Tyrese, brother, we appreciate you again. Thank you for stopping appreciate through. You, fellas. Congrats on that deal. Appreciate you, brother. Ah! Thank you for appreciate y'all. Uh, we just shook 260 right there. <laughs> yeah, we did. We did <laughs> that. Hey, hey appreciate out? y'all for rocking with us for another episode of Podcast P. Y'all have been the best. Shout out Tyrese again for coming and rocking with us. Shout out my guys, Dallas Rutherford and Jackie Long. It is a wrap.